I don't know a single balanced successful guy. Brokies talk about, oh, you need balance, moderation and stuff. Never heard a rich guy say that. I was down bad, living in Manchester, taking drugs every day. My name is Hamza and I help young men go through the Jeffrey to Adonis transformation. Okay, this is the level we're all at. This is what's capable for people like me, my age. When someone breaks it, it's like, oh, okay, so I could be better. No, 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 he's, he's got to be lying. Sometimes even stupid action works and there's like an illiterate guy who can create success. When you already make over 100,000 a month and you've retired, everyone anyway. It's been hard to like give a shit about more business success. The rise of Andrew Tate, me, E-Man, it's a symptom of the real problem. And the real problem is... This episode is brought to you by Nolson. Perfect fit and premium fabrics at affordable prices. Click the link in the description and use code LOTGENOTE20 for a 20% discount. Hamza. I did a little bit research on you and I saw some uh, in a blog, I saw uh, written that you are a millionaire, that you have a net worth of $2 million. And I was questioning, uh, is that true? It depends how you calculate net worth. It's, it's hard for like, for an influencer because net worth is calculated on your assets. Your subscribers, your email list is an asset, but you can't technically kind of sell it to other people. So it's hard. But basically, the most current figures I have is we make $190,000 a month in my one program that I sell. Great. You sell it on school, right? Yeah, that's right. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we just yeah, got number cool. one on school. We, really? I've been number one on school for a while. Yeah. There was a big school competition with Alex Amozzi, Sam Ovens. We just came number one on that. That's crazy. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Very nice. Later on, we can talk more about it. Yeah. How you did that. Yeah, I'm sure. very curious about it. Sure. But first, um, you make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> can be easy about Let's it. keep our voice down, bro. We're in Amsterdam, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. That's like, why we're in the basement. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy in <laughs> hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can hear us here, so that, uh, that will be fine. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of people that are watching and then they see you and they think, oh, he's a millionaire. He's here and I'm only here, right? Mm. So what is the one of the biggest lessons you learned on your way to become a millionaire? Mm. Oh, good question. You know, first I'll say you said there's some guys who are seeing me and thinking, oh, he's there, I'm here. I was born in poverty. Mm. I was I was born in like fully poor family. I didn't have enough calories to eat. And so my body didn't develop properly. My knees are like fucked up, caved in. I had rickets from malnourishment. So I was as poor as they could have been to start with. And first it was my, my father who worked incredibly hard for two decades. He worked like a laborer. He, he worked 14, 16 hours a day. Nighttime, taxi driver, shop, um, shop owner one of the biggest lessons is having a supportive family because many guys don't have that when i i uh, came home in 2020 I'd, I'd moved out to university to manchester then i moved back home <clears throat> and i want to take business seriously i want to become a youtuber and you know my parents had always seen me as this kid who's just playing video games eating junk food just being stupid whatever but i came back as a new man I came back with a bald head. I was training for the military. Every day I'm waking up at 5 a.m., 4.30, hitting push-ups. I'm skipping outside when my dad wakes up. So they've never seen this version of me before. I've got a six-pack. I'm not fat. I'm not binge eating. I'm eating clean. For weeks I did this. Mm. Then one time they asked me, so, you know, what do you want to do with your life? You graduated university. What do you want to do? And I look them both in the eyes and I say, I'm going to be a YouTuber. The next day I wake up with 18 new subscribers and it's just people from like our family, our village, our farm. Hey bro, you know, I'm from your dad's village. He sent everyone the link. We were here to support you. Amazing. My family was supportive from the beginning, from that point, like three, even when I had no subscribers, they set up everything so that I had like a amazing place to work, no distractions. My mother makes the food, brings it up to me and everything. My dad's ticket drives me anywhere I need to go. And that's my special advantage. It's like, I'm not a self-made millionaire. I'm a millionaire with, the, with a family who helped me get there. Mm. Amazing. You were already rich. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> as you said before, there are a lot of uh, younger guys, girls as well probably, that don't have the support system that you had. Mm. And it's very hard because you can't build the support system in your parents. You can't tell them to be supportive if they're not. Mm. 
So how would you go about creating a great support system that maybe resembles what you had if you don't have it from your family? That's an excellent question. Yeah. With good friends. You meet other guys who are like-minded, who you have like this banter with, you're all the same age, you have the same goals, the same kind of desires. You respect one another and you have this this person to bounce off. And suddenly it's like, it's not hard to get rich when you've got another guy who also has the goal and you just hang out together. No, Even if you're in the gym, you're you're chilling, you're getting coffee. You'll just talk about ideas. You'll say, oh, you could do this with your YouTube channel. You could do this. If you don't have the supportive family, then at least go and cultivate the friends. And then the question is, how do you meet like-minded friends? Because mm. 90% of guys, 95% of guys are just fucking losers. They're just watching porn, playing video games, fine with being being low level. So you got to find these communities. You got to use like the the internet space and find a way to connect. Like we've connected now. It's important that you, that you reach out and at least the fastest way is just develop the online personal brand. If I had zero subscribe, I wouldn't be here today. Of course not. You wouldn't have ever have found me. Mm. But if when you build up a personal brand, you build up the podcast, you build up the YouTube channel, the TikTok. It's like your online CV. People will find you and they'll literally make it easy to connect with you. And suddenly it's like you're getting invited to come like hang out and talk business and laugh about shit. True. It's like you've got the contact now. You've got the support system. Yeah. True. True. So how did this start out for you? Like, <clears throat> as you said, your family was your first like support system. But then still, you have 18 subscribers. So your CV is not that built out as of yet. How do you start building out the digital CV? Like, what's your first thing you're going to do? Because now you have to do something. Because everybody is like, he's going to do this thing and you're up in the room. What's next? I'll tell you a practical step. I'm sure you guys have done it. Is, is figure out the avatar, the person you're making the content for or the business or the product for. For me, it was very simple. It was just younger me. And I think this was my competitive advantage was I was never trying to build a big audience, honestly. And I'd, I'd, I'd love to tell you like, yeah, oh, yeah, I started and you know, I knew I was going to be massive. I really didn't. All I thought was I had been through shit. I had made huge progress. I used to be a degenerate. I had used to you know, be addicted to video games, junk food, whatever. And I made progress. And I knew that I could just help people like me. That's all I've ever tried to do is just think of younger Hamza and give him advice. So I, I made like this detailed uh, documents on my computer, like who I'm making videos for. Younger Hamza. At 7 a.m. he does this. At 10 a.m. he does this. At 9 p.m. instead of going to sleep, he does he he watches porn. So I'm, I'm like I'm writing all these these step by step specific details. Yeah. And of course it's me, so I understand you know who I'm making the videos for. And I remember at the time it was it was almost special to do this because I'd record my videos and people would comment like I've never seen a YouTuber talk like this before. It feels like he's really talking to me. I've never once on my channel said like Hey you guys you know welcome back everyone. Or I'm speaking to like younger me who's depressed who's upset who's lonely who hates his life and when i speak directly to him and, and you know to the viewer they finally feel heard they finally feel like they've got someone to connect with so that's what i'd say if anyone wants to get into like social media the, one of the greatest things you can do is is don't think about the audience you want to build think about just the one person you want to impact yeah. are you too busy grinding working and end up eating shitty food with the few your body meals you can always have a quick and healthy meal take in the link in the description get your meal today after five videos <coughs> or something you already got a hit a viral video which got over three million views yeah after five videos only it was a seven it was it was after a while so it was yeah i posted five videos in like 2019 and then i stopped after that mm -hmm. then i started posting consistently in 2020 for a year straight and got to like one 1 1.5 thousand subscribers mm. and then one day one of the first videos I ever posted went from 200 views to 20,000 in one day. And I started to gain like 1,000, 3,000, 5,000 subscribers per day. And it just carried on. It's got like 4, 4.5. I think it's one of the most viewed fitness videos on YouTube now. But it, it was lucky. It, that was just pure luck because it was an old video. I didn't touch it or anything. It had two, 200 views like this, just stayed still. Yeah. And it just went up for some reason. Damn. And you know what, actually? You know what was actually lucky about this? That topic was on building an aesthetic body, like an attractive body that gets girls. Just before it blew up for about a month, I was working on an online course on the exact same topic. So when it blew up, I had it ready. I set it up for sale and I went from 1K a month to like 10K, 15K a month. And I'd never been below $10,000 a month since that point. That's crazy because when you started, <coughs> I heard that your goal was to earn 1K a month. Exactly. Yeah. And then you go like... yeah. 
past that goal, you earn a lot more than that. Mm. What is your next goal then? One million profit in December. This year? Yeah. So, so how long ago did you hit like the first 10K? Like how many years? You said in 2020 you really start posting and the first mm. post really hits. How long after that is the yeah. 10K month? 2020, May, I started really. And I think June or July 2021, so just over one year to get my first 10K. Really? Yeah. Okay. And so after that, because that's what we noticed usually with business, like from a zero to 1K it takes very long mm. and one to 10K it takes very long, but 10 to, for example, 50 or 100K, it gets way easier. Mm. So how did you see your business develop after that? Mm. So it was it was 10K a month just by selling this online course and I made some other courses for probably about, maybe about one year, it went up to like 30K. Because my mindset was always, I was way more focused on the audience building rather than the monetizing. And it was this idea that, okay, if you sell hard, you're probably going to sacrifice some of the audience building. And I just wanted to get the audience. So it was about 30,000 a month in um, yeah June 2022. And it stayed at that point for, for a while because I just, I refused to learn like the monetizing skills. I wasn't good at that. You know, make it in the sales pages or even hiring people. I'm in a particular style of business, which is like, I'm very good at speaking to people, giving advice, influencing, leadership, but I'm not that great at the actual monetizing things. I didn't even know like most of the terms before this. And um, when I moved to Dubai at the end of 2022, I remember it was the first time where I, I actually, in a weird way, was kind of broke, where I was making 30K a month, but my expenses were about 30, 35K a month as well. My videos were super expensive to make. Then I had the lifestyle, you know, I'm an influencer, got to look cool, got to show the yeah. Rolex and stuff. <laughs> and um, after that point, when I moved back early 2023, that's when I got onto school. And then when I launched that, I made 75K in the first 24 hours. And then since that point, it's been above 100K every single month. So I wonder, a bit selfishly, Like the thing we've been doing as well is building audience. And then at some point you want to monetize. But there's always like the mental battle between if I start monetizing too hard, won't the <coughs> audience I build be like, what is this? We came here for value, but now mm -hmm. it's just selling. So how did you notice this developing? Like you start to go from just building audience to monetizing them as well. What were the effects of this switch? Honestly, as long as you have a team Who, uh, who can manage either side of, of building the audience or monetizing. I don't think it's as clear cut as like, if you monetize, you're not going to build the audience. Like look at Iman. Iman monetizes hard, makes a fuck ton of money, but his audience is getting bigger than ever. So he broke that belief for me. I think that was like an old belief I had, which was like, okay, if I, if I monetize, my audience won't grow. And I, I, I was certain that was the case up until I saw Iman do his big events. He's got to 4 million subscribers. He's monetized. He, he's made millions per month in some of his events. So how, how do you do it? If, well, if you've got a team who, for example, are still making the very valuable content and you're still leveling that up, then, and then you've, let's say, for example, you've got the team who are making the product side of things and monetizing, then you'll be fine. Yeah. There's like a lot of young YouTubers ask me like, oh, when should I monetize? And I just tell them like the brain dead answers, like, When you want to make money, don't, don't overthink it. It's like if you want to make more money right now, if that's like the goal of yours, especially for the young guys who, who aren't even making the first 1K, I tell them like the first one to 2K a month will change your life the biggest amount ever. If you imagine the normal guy, he's like unemployed, he's 18 years old or he has a shit job. If he makes $1,000 a month, his life has changed forever. So I tell them, okay, rush to that point, rush to maybe 5K a month. You're living like a king from the people that you know. You can go travel, you can stay in Airbnbs, you can go to restaurants, whatever. And then stay there for a little while. And then when you when you set a big goal, like for example, you want to make a certain amount of profit this year, then go all in. And what you might be surprised by is like your audience will grow the same amount yeah. because there's one, on one hand, like you said, it's like, you know, the audience wants the value. But on the other hand, it's like the audience are inspired by how much money you make. Like there's a lot yeah, of guys who watch thing. me right now yeah. Because because of the fact that I've made so much in the last like year. Did so, you have to get over that mentally? Because yeah. I think a lot <laughs> of influencers at some point are like, well, but if I start looking too successful, it might be like not attract, but like push send them away, away push yeah. them away because yeah. they're like, well, I mean, we fucked with you when you were like an interesting guy us, I yeah. could understand, but now you're yeah. not one of us anymore. Yeah, exactly. But usually yeah. the opposite is true, right? That it's it's so true. It's a tricky game when you're an influencer and you have like a big audience as well, mm. especially when you've been there for a while. It's it's hard because you'll you'll get 
people who like you for so many different reasons. So there was a time I moved to to Bali and I was just doing videos like this, just like podcast ones, high, high um, budget, 4K videos. But the same style of video, it was just me talking. And pe- there was so much hate. People were like, oh, I miss the old Hamza. I miss when he was in his parents' bedroom. I was like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, you want me to be a loser like you again? Like, oh, Hamza, you changed. I'm like, it's a self-improvement channel, dickhead. What did you think? It's, like, it's been three years, bro. Of course I did. Like, yeah. So it, it's hard. It's You will get people who will comment. Let's say you guys make a fuck ton of money this month, this year. You'll get people who will be like, oh, I miss the old room. You know, the whole yeah. you had the, mm-hmm. the French shoe boxes on the side. Yeah, You've got to just think, who, who are you optimizing for? Is it the kind of guys who aren't actually making that much progress and they're stuck at that earlier level? Or is it the guys who look up to the success? In the um, conversation I just had previous, I was saying, I, I wish more young guys had this brotherhood mindset where when you see another guy doing well, you, you praise him for it. But we don't, and I don't know why. And I, I have this as well. Like in, in 2019, when I first saw Iman Gaji and I saw his adverts and he was making so much money and he's retired his mother and he's done this. I thought he was an asshole. I honestly, like, I hated him for no reason. I, like, yeah. I literally thought, okay, scammer, liar, whatever. It's, it's got to be fake. He's younger mm-hmm. than me. He makes millions. No, got to be fake. Yeah. Got to be. Two, three years later, like, he gave me this watch and everything. It's like, of course it's not fake. But I, but I, I hated him without even ever knowing him just because I saw an advert, just because it was like, he looked successful. And I think so many guys have got this. I don't know where it's come from. Like education system has made us hate the the winner because we should all be the, you know, the participation trophy guys. Yeah. But I wish more guys just saw someone who was building the success and, and looked up to him and thought, damn, that's so interesting. Let me learn from him. That's interesting to unfold though. Like, because I've been wondering about this as well. Like, why do we grow up with such a, we don't like success. It's just like, there's a type of hate and we also get very easily um, like, what do you call it? Jealous. Mm. Yeah, we get jealous, but also very easy to like uh, tell somebody that's not true. So like, for example, we have this guy in the Netherlands, Joshua Katz, who at the very beginning of like uh, online guru ship, he was one of the first guys that started selling a course. And he came from the same neighborhood that we grew up in. So we saw him in real life doing well and i was like well that seems interesting i would like to do that and then i think one or two friends were like nah man he's a scammer and was very easily convinced Mm. and afterwards i wonder like at face value i was like that's very interesting i believe it i want to like go in it but then i was very easily convinced that it's not true Mm. so what do you think creates that among young people or people in general that they do not believe success for some reason it's like the, the fat coworker who sits next to me. So when I worked full time, I was enlisted into the military as well. And I, I had shaved my head. I would wake up at five, go to the office where we had a gym. I would train there. I'd do the first part of our work shift before lunch and sneakily on the side, I'd eat my sandwich so that I had my full lunch hour and I'd go back to the gym. Mm-hmm. The people around me, they were obese. They were fat. Before I went to that office, they were all fine with that excuse. They didn't have time. They weren't, they were too tired with work. I broke it for them. And of course that's gonna make them feel uncomfortable. So it's the same with money. It's the same with success, especially for like people in your area. It's like, okay, this is, this is the level we're all at. This is what's capable for people like me, my age. When someone breaks it, it's like, oh, okay. So I could be better. No, 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 he's, he's gotta be lying. That's, I'll protect yeah. my ego. That's it. But another thing is, you know, as you guys were saying that, I pictured Mr. Burns, you know, from The Simpsons, the yeah, cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> Evil. Evil guy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Every movie you watch, every cartoon, the rich guy is evil. Yeah, true. What James Bond true? and everything, it's always the evil Bond guy. It's, yeah, it's always the evil billionaire. Yeah. Even Batman is a good guy, but also a little bit the bad guy, right? Bit of an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is how they display like powerful, successful men. Mm. It's, it, this. Like we've watched all these Hollywood movies from the start that, okay, these these rich guys are manipulative, dark. They've always got some like hidden whatever. Bro, poor people are exactly like that as well. What do you want about? <laughs> We're all fucked up, what do you want about? Like it, it, it sounds so special when it's a rich guy who, who's um, doing something manipulative. Broke people are exactly the same. But I feel like we, we've been uh, raised with this conditioning that the winners are like bad people. Like you guys know the tall poppy syndrome. Yeah. Like when one one flower grows above the rest, you, you chop it down. 
because it looks kind of weird, right? So you, yeah. you cut it down. And I think this is what we we do as like a society is you see someone who's rising up and you're happy for them mm-hmm. up until the point that they go past you. And then, oh, he must be cheating. Like you, you guys ever play like Xbox or something when you were younger? It's like sure. anyone, anyone yeah. worse than you is a noob. Anyone better is cheating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hacker. yeah, sure. Hacking. This, Hacks. Just, <laughs> aim. Just anyone really, bigger than me is using steroids. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's really something that, do you know Patrick but David? Yeah, of course. He talks a lot about this, right? Uh, he said like, um, first I was small and my friends were much r- richer than I am. And then they were like cool with each other. But on the moment that Patrick B. David had more success than his friends, his friends became enemies. Mm. And they were talking by, behind his back. And I was thinking like, they have never been my friends. They were just fine by m- with me when I was lower than them. Mm. But when I get step up, they don't like it anymore. Mm. And I think that is just how people are, right? You like to be the best. You want to be first. I don't like to be second. I want to be first too. Mm. But it is a conscious thing to think about other persons and think like, okay, I'm feeling jealous, but that's because they are just a few steps ahead of me. And I want the same thing or or a part that they also have. Mm. And that is like the jealousy emotion that you have, right? Now I want to talk about you with um, about that success. Um, I did some um, reading on on Twitter, on X, and I saw a post that you wrote about success and how you get there. You said you just have to work hard. Can you tell us more about that? Is it just simply as that? More than that, of course, but it's su- such an un- unsexy answer. The guys I know who are super successful, they just work five times more than the guys who aren't. It's honest, like it's it's almost that simple. Now, of course, there's guys who work really hard, but they never make good money. Let's say the taxi driver, the Uber driver who works 12 hours a day. Yeah. There's only two things you need. You need to work really hard, but you also need education. So work as hard as possible and read and learn as much as possible. If you just have those two things, you can create a lot of success. You can make a lot of money in this world. If you just work as hard as possible, you'll be maxed out on like 3k a month uber driver whatever delivery driver if you just educate yourself but then you don't work hard with it you'll be kind of like the maybe someone who you know works one hour a day and he makes 5k a month or something but also maybe the guy who just doesn't even take action he just watches my videos and then clicks on the next one and the next one and the next one he's it's good for me like, yeah it's good for me like please keep doing that <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah. yeah so you need both there's a phrase i've been playing with is like someone asked me in the gym as well and i said the reason for my success is because I work like an educated immigrant. When you work like an immigrant, you have something to prove and you you have this like 12 hour days is normal. I've been raised on that, but you need the education. When you read all the books on money, you read the books on business, you're watching the podcast. This is what you do for fun. Like, you know, when other people are watching like, I don't know, sports or whatever, when they're eating, they're watching movies or TV shows, but you're watching podcasts. That's the difference. Because mm. then the next time you work, you're working in a more intelligent way. So I wouldn't say it's just as simple as hard work, but I think educated hard work is the key to success. Whether you know it or not, sales is one of the most crucial parts of your business. Mm. Indeed, the lack of sales is the direct reason why Kuhn's first business flopped. Mm. Sales can make or break a company. And in the beginning, it might be quite simple to just kick in doors and do cold sales to bring in euros. But over time, to truly build a successful business, you'll need to approach your sales more systematically. We're noticing it ourselves now too. When you suddenly work with hundreds of leads and dozens of partners, it's easy to lose track. Mm. Unfortunately, the result is too often that revenues are lost and customers are dissatisfied because you don't have a good system. And that's why I now have an important question for you. Do you have a strong sales system you can truly rely on and trust? Mm. Chances are you don't, but I have good news. Pipedrive is the number one rated sales CRM. In Pipedrive, you can make your entire sales process clear, including customer data, reminders, contact history, and much more. So you have complete control over your sales process. Pipedrive users realize an average of about 28% more deals in their first year purely by using the software systematically. Mm -hmm. So if you want to improve your sales process and close an average of about 28% more deals per year, try Pipedrive for 30 days for free via the link in our description. Some people are... How many episodes do we have? 
I think 250. maybe 250 or 260. Like and um, a lot of hours of talking. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of, uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. And um, I think a few weeks ago we spoke to someone and listened to all the podcasts, all the episodes. But we are like our our person that we talk to is a entrepreneur. We want to help entrepreneurs to become bigger. And he listened to every episode, but he didn't have the, the desire to become an entrepreneur. Mm. What is then the difference between someone that is like listening, listening and becomes successful and the other person that is also listening, but doesn't become successful? Mm. They've got to be taking action. You remind me of, of one time I got this Uber in, in UK and the he, the driver room, he, he reminded me of who I could have been, which I probably sound like an asshole, but like he spoke like me in the same kind of mannerisms and everything. Uh -huh. And when he described what it was like as an Uber driver, he, he used the exact words that I would have of like, oh, it's chill, it's this, it's this, it's this. And then there was one point where I just lost all respect for him because we started speaking about Andrew Tate and he mentioned Tate's program to make money online. Hustle, it was Hustlers University at the moment, $49, right? 30 something pounds. And I asked him, oh, have you joined? Is it good? And he said, oh, no, I've been thinking about it. Hmm. That's all he needed to say. I know, I know he's still broke today. I, yeah. I know it for a fact. There's the people who think about it, who think about speaking to the girl over there, who think about starting the business, who think about implementing the new thing. They're getting destroyed by the guy who, like, as soon as he gets the insight, he just goes and does it. Mm. The, the guy who, like, as soon as he gets the, the idea to go speak to the girl, he just walks over there. Because imagine the energy you bring as well, just for that interaction. The guy who, as soon as he gets the insight, walks over with confident body language, with a bit of momentum. The guy who overthinks it, if he does go, which he probably won't, but if he does go speak to the girl, now he's like, he's been thinking about what, yeah, she, what to yeah, say. Yeah, and he's yeah, been it, it, overthinking and it, like analyzing. It's the exact same on a macro level with your yeah. business idea. When you've been autistically thinking about each step of like, oh, maybe I'll start a YouTube channel. I've been thinking about it for four years. That was me. I was like, I wanted to be a YouTuber when I was like 14 years old and I just wasted like five years of my life. Yep. I could have been so so much further ahead, but it's there's doubts and there's like, oh, I'm just thinking about it. But you don't need time to think about anything. You need a bit of information and you need to just take action. It, it, there's an analogy I like, which is like, if you're trying to find the direction to go into or of a decision, you have to go forward. Imagine being sat in a parked car, trying to like decide if you should at the end of that road, go left or right, <laughs> and you don't move. So just drive forward and just see if you, like <laughs> see when you've got a better vantage point. Of course, you can't see any more directions. You just stood still doing nothing. Mm. Go in one direction for the guys watching this and like, oh, I don't know what business. Just choose one. Just choose YouTube. Just go post like 50 videos first. Yep. Just go choose drop sh shipping. Go make five sites over the next few months mm. because you'll learn things with that. It's not like, you know, the first girl you go to speak to, it's not like she's going to become your wife, but it'll, it'll set you in motion for the next step and the next step and the next step. Yep. But there's guys who, who message me like, I've been thinking about starting the gym. Go pussy. What, what are you on about? Like, oh, I've been thinking about it. I just don't know what workout. Just go and like play with the machines for like three times. You'll make progress. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that at the starting levels, especially like, you know, you said they haven't started yet. If you just do anything, you make progress. If we get a fat guy to go to the gym and he literally just walks through the doors and sits on any machine, he's made progress. Skinny guy, we, we tell him, okay, just go play in the gym. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. He's made progress. But people, people like to stay in, in safety and they want the perfect workout routine first. They want the perfect business plan first. Mm. It, you know, there's a, there's, I have not spoke to him in so long, so it's fine. But like, there was a guy I knew in, in university who was very much into like business, but in that kind of thing of more of the mental masturbation of like mm -hmm. business plans and everything. And we both had the exact same desire. We started at the same time and he didn't make anything off it. Cause he, he would message me saying, oh, he's working on his business plan and stuff. And it never made sense to me. Like business plan for what? Like, what the fuck is the point of that? Like, you're not even like, you know, to make his YouTube channel or to get into <laughs> trading or something like what's, what's the point? It's just, it's fake work. So a lot of guys will, will consume content and think it's productive and it can be, but only if you're actually using it. So one of the traits that I use, which I'll, I'll share is like, I try and use whatever I've learned as soon as possible. So the moment you learn it, you try and shorten the distance to using it. So the reason why my social skills improved in, in 2020 over COVID was because I started to read how to win friends and influence people. Mm. But instead of just reading it, like most people, the moment I got an insight, I put the book away and literally went out into the street and used that tactic to people. 
the same with like I press record on a video and start using one of the things I learned there. These days in business, the moment I get some kind of idea that we should implement, I'll send a message to my team and we will tr move on it immediately. There's a quote I like, which is, you must outfail the competition. Mm -hmm. You must run these experiments. Uh, outfail. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. Yeah, that's that's interesting because you brought up the point of the post on X about like, what's the main thing about success? And you said work harder. But I think for me, after speaking to, as you said, like 200 plus entrepreneurs, some worth hundreds of millions, the one common denominator I saw between them is just taking action. Mm. Some even stupidly, like dumb people just taking action yeah. over and over again. And then, and those are the people that you're like, he's illiterate, but he's worth 50 million. Yeah. And then you're like, how well he must be lucky. No, 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 no. That's because he's literate in the one thing that he needs to be literate in, which is just doing stuff. Mm. And that's the main takeaway that we still implement into our business because we notice in ourselves as well that we still procrastinate at some, at the point of a new business or a new thing. So for example, you're like, well, I want to monetize the channel, but in a new way. We use these two or three different business models right now, but we want to have a new one. And then we're like, so let's talk about it, speak to these and these and this person. And then after a few weeks or sometimes even months, we're like, maybe we just start doing and then just find out what we do need to do and don't need to do. Mm. Do you notice this in yourself as well, that you still on a new level start maybe procrastinating or doing the wrong things again because you're at a new level? Yeah. There's the, the game of business is one of many levels with different bosses. And like level zero is like, Stop touching your PP, bro. Like just, just work. <laughs> like literally, just, just try to work. Yeah, Stop. Yeah. Like, like people work like they're mentally disabled. That's like the first boss is like learn how to work. They'll, you guys know this with your high performance. People will start working and then like just stand up for no reason and like walk around their room and start flexing in the mirror. That's me. Like start flexing in the, no for no reason. The phone notification goes off. They start texting and stuff. <clears throat> At a certain level, it's like it. It's weird now. It it's actually beneficial for me to take more time before I take action. Because when you've already got a platform completely set up, now it's like, I have to be more patient with taking action. Sometimes there's something I want to do straight away and we need to actually wait a couple of weeks before we can implement, you know, like a new product or an upsell or a sale or something. And so that like the beast changes. But one of the things you said was in my mind, you know, you said like, sometimes even stupid action works and there's like an illiterate guy who can create success. I really think business and dating are very similar. And I'd urge like any young man who's watching this to think about like, there's been a time when he's had a crush on a girl and some idiot's got in her. <laughs> Why? Not because he's actually better than you. Many of the guys watching your podcast are smart, intelligent, hardworking, and there's lesser men sleeping with the women they want. Why? Because that lesser guy just went up and spoke to her. Mm -hmm. Like when you see the most beautiful women, the nines and beautiful, beautiful girls, Often they're not with the, the best man. They're just with the guy who just tried. They just, the, the guy just walked up and spoke to her with a bit of confidence. Present. That's it, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. And, and that's all it took. Whereas all us like intellectuals are sat here trying to like micro analyze what message. Like, okay, so she sent a message at 7.23. So I like, just, just shut up and just turn like, turn 50% of your brain off and just try. Just yeah. go up and speak to the girl. Just go up and start the business, post your first video. You'll be surprised of just how much results you can get when you can just try. Mm. I think a lot of confusion also comes from the fact, the point you br brought up earlier is like, at some point you do have to slow down mm. and start thinking very practical, be rational and make a business plan mm. because you have a business that has a hundred people that work there. So you cannot just go gung ho, do whatever you want. And that's where people get it mixed up because there's a beginning beginner watching at videos of somebody that has been in business for 10 years, mm. li listening to the advice yeah. after 10 years. But it's not gonna work for you if you're in your first year. Yeah. And that's where it gets very interesting because what's the translation to my phase of business I'm in and who do I need to be looking at? Because who I need to be looking at this year could be completely different from the person I need to be looking at next year. And this is the same in health and fitness and in relationships as well. So how do you think people should go about finding the right people to get information from, because there's a lot of people giving information these days. <laughs> that's that's a, true. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah. brilliant point. So there's um, there's something that a friend of mine named Andrew Kirby, he sent me a message, right? He, he's the one who invited me onto school in the first place. Yeah. He works closely with like Alex Mosey and some others. <coughs> and I asked him, 
from what you know about me, because he 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 uh, has done like kind of like work for me and everything, right? And I said, from what you know about me and my business, what do you think the constraint is for me to move on to the next level? Mm. And he sent this big message back, which I'll always remember. He said, in the early days, you're like a speedboat. You need to be quick and be able to move directions fast. But when you're at the level that you're at, you're more like a cruise ship. You need to set the direction and try and stay consistent without changing the direction. So in the early days, that sort of ADHD entrepreneur who, who has like this, you know, this go, 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 go mode is very powerful. But later on, what, once you've built up a huge level of success and there's more to lose, that's when you don't want to be like this ADHD guy. Like that's my biggest weakness as an entrepreneur. It's like, I'll lose interest in something and gain it in something else. I said, okay, guys, let's just do this instead. Like, well, we should just refund everyone, guys. It sounds like a great <laughs> thing. So I did that. I refunded like 700 guys like last year. It sounds like yeah. a great idea to me. Like, <laughs> my team's looking at me like at this level, it's basically like the, the biggest constraint of my business is just me. It's just like I'm I'm there setting fire to stuff and my team has to put it out. Like, yeah. But at, at the earlier levels, it's just like, it, uh, well, your question was, okay, how, how do you find the right person? It can, there's two things. You can try and find the person who's just one step ahead of you. So if there's a guy who's, uh, who's um, let's say just wanting to get into business, you could find a content creator who's making like 1K a month or 2K a month and follow hit their journey and that could be nice. Or you've got to try and find the, the, the high level guys who have got so much awareness that they can actually like speak to you as their avatar. So this is, this is kind of like me talking about younger me. When I make videos, I try not to talk about like my current life or my current mindset towards things because it sounds sounds like you know offensive but the rules are different for the levels of men that you are. When yes. I, when I was 18 years old I had to play by different rules. The game that I play now has completely different rules than what my audience has to play by. Mm -hmm. So I've made the mistake sometimes where like I'll talk about my current life and guys will kind of take that and then they'll be confused and everything. No it doesn't work but last year you said this. No 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 but like no offense, but there's a big difference between the game we're playing now yeah. with the money I'm making with the man I've yeah. become. So yeah. it, it, it's difficult as the influencer to always be in the shoes of your audience. And that's what we need to do. It's like, you need to be always be thinking about the avatar and think, hey, where are they actually? And so for the guys who are actually watching the content, just keep an eye out for the kind of person who talks directly to you. And you can tell that like their advice works. As always, just blind, like, just take action, take the stupid action. Yeah. If I give you a piece of advice on my video, just try it. Don't even overthink it. Just try it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I remember once when, when Andrew Tate was going viral and so many people were criticizing him, his advice is this, is this, is this. I actually thought to myself, you know what? If the average young man turns his brain off and does exactly what Andrew Tate says, his life will be significantly better by the end of the year. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. For many young guys, especially at those earlier levels, it can be quite nice to turn like 50% of your brain off, stop the the challenging, the critical thoughts and just go do what one of your role model influencers suggests and just see what results you get. One of the things I say to the guys is, your brain got you here today. Your brain made you watch porn a thousand times. Your brain made you eat the junk food, stay up late, whatever. Why would you keep trusting your brain? Hmm. If I give you a piece of advice, like, okay, go to the gym, do this workout and your brain disagrees, but you're fat, why would you trust your brain? So I think the reason why I was able to make quite a lot of progress was I just had this skill to turn my own brain off, look towards my mentors, towards people who had create, created amazing success and just try what they suggested and just see what happened. It, and there's been a few guys for me who, when I tried what they suggested, my life kept on getting better and better and better and better. That's how you know you found the right person. Yep. Then just keep watching their videos up until that stops and then find someone else. We interrupt this episode because as you know, without NordVPN, you're not an entrepreneur. Yeah, I've said it so many times mm. already. NordVPN is key for you to work efficiently. Like a key. It's not exactly key, mm. but it's very cool. I personally use it to get YouTube Premium mm. because YouTube Premium is ridiculously expensive in the Netherlands these days. In the Netherlands, it's like 12 euros a month. Mm -hmm. And in Turkey, it's one euro 50 a month. Besides, you can also use NordVPN to watch porn when you're in Dubai for oh. those who like that. Okay. It's not necessary, necessary for me because I have a lady, my sweetheart, I love you. But it might be relevant for other people watching this. But let's talk about the part where you can get cheap subscriptions. With mm. NordVPN, you can change your location to other countries. Yeah. So your IP address appears to be in Turkey, for example. And in Turkey, huge premium is only one euro 50 a month. So what do you do? You switch to Turkey, get a subscription there, and suddenly you're paying a lot less. Huh. 
I'm using huge premium for over a year now. And that's the cost that Koen pays per month in the Netherlands is what I pay a year. And the same goes for things like Spotify, Netflix, whatever. You can use a lot of things to get cheaper deals. Mm. I've also noticed a business popping up where people create these cheap accounts and then resell the accounts for a bit more money, but still less than they usually cost in Western countries. Just get NordVPN yourself. Don't get duped. It only costs a cup of coffee per month. And Mm. with our link, you can even get four months free. So use NordVPN to get YouTube Premium or other subscriptions much cheaper. Plus, another advantage I find really important is I'm a big fan of, for example, the Godfather movies. And they're not always available in your country on Netflix. By switching your IP location to, for example, the United Kingdom, Canada or Japan, these movies will be able to watch on Netflix for you as well. Mm. So it's a win-win situation. You're supporting us. And we really appreciate that. And you support yourself by being able to watch amazing movies and get better deals. So click on the link down below and then we'll get back to the show. So how do you go about this when you're very young and you don't really know what to look at as to what is improving? Because that's the thing like I think a lot of young people struggle with as well. It's like, I don't even know what I need to be improving, let alone what would happen if it were to improve. So then it gets very difficult because I try a new thing, but I'm actually quite clueless to what the results are. Mm. So how do you go about that? Because then it gets difficult. I made 1,000 self-improvement videos. And recently what I've done is I put the best part of all of them into a program, which is completely free for anyone to go through. Because my idea was, okay, there's so many directionless young guys. And as much as I want like the ad revenue and stuff, truthfully, it's like I want somewhere to send the average young guy who wants to create like a better life for himself. But most young guys have got the exact same goals. Basically, you want to be richer. You want to make some pretty good money online. You want to be able to attract a girl or at least be more attractive. And you want some respect from guys. Almost every guy has those goals along with others. So I made what I call the Adonis Protocol, completely free, just like a massive course that I made, which is like step-by-step, step, just do this. Here's like some things that will help you create like a new life. So for the guys who, who have those goals, want to be more attractive to girls, want to make money and stuff, it's there, it's available completely for free. And um, it walks them through like how to create, how to to be reborn, even as, as serious as like I tell them, do exactly what I did, grab the, the trimmer, take all your hair off. I do that like every few months, every like once a year, maybe. Take yeah, but all you're lucky. Off. Huh? You probably look pretty good with short hair. If I do yeah. that, I look like an avocado. But, <laughs> 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 but see, that's the point. The, the weird reason why is not just for you know um, the look or anything. It's because every day when you step in front of the mirror, you'll remember you're on a new path. There's there's True. like a phrase mm. I like, which is you have to kill the current version of yourself. I think this is what stops most guys is at the at the lower levels, at the earlier levels is who they are, their self-image, their identity is so poor. They see themselves as video game nerds. They've been bullied. Their parents treated them like this. They've been watching porn and stuff. They need to die. They need to kill this version of themselves and be reborn through the ashes. And the way to do that is like, how does the military do it? One of yep. the first days you're there, yeah. they take your clothes away and give you the, the same uniform. They trim your hair. They, they, they shout at you until you're broken and then you you reform as this new man. And so we need like a protocol exactly like that, but just for the civilian world. Yep. So there's silly things, like I've said, like wear different clothes, wear a watch 24 seven, like a digital watch. So you can always be acutely aware of the time have a military timetable. So at 5 a.m., you know exactly what you're doing. 6, 15, you know exactly what you're doing. Trim the hair off, change like the clothes I've I've said, wear like white shirts always, especially when you go to the gym so that that way you can clearly see your physique. Trim the hair and trim the beard so that if you've got any kind of spots or lumps from a bad diet, it's completely aware to you. It's like you're really seeing your your naked self and realizing, damn, like my skin's fucking horrible. I've got weird spots. I've got like bumps in the back of my head. Like the first time I did this in 2019, I realized I had so many gross spots like on my scalp and everything because my diet was terrible. The few times I've, I've trimmed my beard and I notice I've got like some spots there. It's like, you can't hide it anymore. With the, the white shirt I tell my guys to wear, it's like, if you're fat or skinny, you can't hide that. You know, if you wear the big hoodie and stuff, okay, it's yeah. fine. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm bulking, whatever. But wear the white shirt. Now we'll see if you still want to bulk. Bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also, like you said, like when you wear a, ru- a white shirt, people will react differently to you because they see, ah, oh, he has a white shirt. He doesn't have a hoodie on. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Who's this guy? That's why we always wear suits because people think, well, are those guys? 
26 years old and they wear suits. But an easy way to that? look interesting without yeah. being yeah. interesting. <laughs> 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 no, I love that you make a very good first impression. I was looking at your Instagram page before this. I was like very sharply dressed. Oh, thank, thank you, man. Thank you. That's it's why I put this on. I'm usually in the white shirt as well with the bold yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let me look a bit clean for these yeah. guys. <laughs> and I'm curious, like um, you just talked about your uh, Adonis uh, protocol, mm -hmm. and you also have like the Adonis school. Yeah. And you win, uh, you won uh, the uh, school games with it. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that, about the school games that you won? Of course. So, yeah, so Adonis Gang is the free community. Inside of that is the protocol, ah. completely free. You guys can find it all online, just Google it. Then the Adonis School is my paid one. And inside of that is like, it's 129 a month. You get as much as possible from me. I do three calls a week minimum. I bring on guests. We, we get like millionaires to coach the guys. I've got YouTube co coaches, testosterone coach. We've got like support coaches. So if a guy's trying to find direction in life, he's got problems with family, whatever, he can come ask for advice. Mm -hmm. Then we do trips. So we've got this business mastermind tonight and we're all meeting here. Then tomorrow we all meet in the park and everything. It's, it's just awesome. And yeah. it's so affordable because you, you guys know being in this space, how much could I charge for a mastermind? I'm just people who charge Thousands. up to 10K, yeah. maybe even more. They get this inside of the 129 subscription. Because it, it's a very powerful model, isn't it? Because so many guys <laughs> join, so I make a fuck ton of money, but exactly. the, each guy doesn't pay that much. And yeah, um, It's not the whole upsell thing of like for 129, no you upsell. get this, but then the That's mastermind it. is 2K extra and everything. There's no upsell. It's just like, you pay the 129, you get access to everything. That's okay. great, man. So Clear. it's nice, yeah. isn't it? And, yeah. And um, yeah, so school, the website it's hosted on had like this big competition. Whoever makes the most money in February wins and we'll fly out to Vegas to meet Alex Amosi and Sam Ovens. And um, I saw it and I was like, oh, I'm not really going to enter because I don't want to push too hard. You know, it, it will change my marketing plan. I wasn't going to push so hard right now to, to sell hard. And like two weeks in, I noticed like I'm I'm second place. <laughs> like I didn't even enter, but I, my name was in there. So I was like, okay, fuck it. Let's just let's like we're second place. It's fine. You know, we'll stay at second. Then I like I keep looking at it. I'm like, you know, second place doesn't sound that great. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's this woman in front of me who, who I think she had like maybe five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars ahead. So me, I said to my brother, like, let's just win. So we pushed hard for it, and we we um we ended with. I think about 88,000 new monthly recurring revenue added on top of what we had before Ooh, in sure. February. Plus, bear in mind that this was uh, organic, no paid ads. Mm. And also, I'd already been selling this product for the last like nine months straight. This wasn't a launch. So mm -hmm. this brought our total uh, monthly recurring revenues up about 190,000 now per month. So I fly Insane. out uh, March 30th to LA for the US for the first time. Really? To really? meet Hormozzi yeah. and... Spend a day with Hormozzi and stuff. Ovens. Yeah. And Sam Ovens, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, great, that's a yeah. good yeah. mastermind to build out. Yeah, Those are you. some knowledgeable men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be a fun experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can talk about them later. I'm really curious what you think of Alex and Mosey and Sam Ovens and how they are doing right now. Yeah. And the investment, of course, from uh, Alex and Mosey in, yeah. in school. Um, but first, we also talked before the podcast that uh, I wanted to do something special, right? You come here and I think what you do with Adonis School is really special, good for the guys. Um, and I said to you, like, can we do something special? Can you, do, uh, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so we'll do a little deal. The, the first 100 of your guys who sign up to Adonis School, I'm going to put them in a separate group and they're gonna vote for the next course that I make. Oh, and nice. so whatever like topic you want me to go and spend like a bunch of time on to make like a step-by-step -step autistically detailed course, whether you wanna learn how to like text girls or you wanna learn how to um, set up Instagram or business, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the first 100 guys who join with your link, I'll make the course and then everyone will also get it. So basically I'll, I'll announce it in their name basically. So anyone who goes through the course in Adonis School will see these 100 guys brought that course for them as well. Cool. So your guys basically will walk in like legends who have got an, an extra <laughs> yeah. course for everyone nice. in there. Okay, that's very great, man. Uh, we will put the link in the description. Yeah. So people can just read over there what it is, what it all means. And um, for a few things, like you talk about, I have like a list here, man. There are like, 30 things that you are talking about in a donor school. I see, for example, um, the uh, thousand skills, uh, success mindset, productivity, but also like leadership and stuff. Um, one of the things that I'm really curious about and that we are talking a lot about uh, lately is leadership. What are like some things that you see now with other people, young men, maybe they're even older, 
like leadership, they need to have that, but most of the time they are still boys. They don't they are not a leader. Mm. What are some things that you maybe lessons that you can give to become a leader? I need to join the program as well, man. Yeah. YouTube coaching, Ali Abdal coaching. Some very uh, knowledgeable people right there. Yeah, it's good to know. Sorry, yeah. just for interrupting this <laughs> question. I was <laughs> okay. looking at all no, the No, no, please keep saying nice things about the product. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> looking through all the courses. <laughs> After you. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, leadership, bro. I um, So you guys probably saw, I made a name for myself as a cult leader. I, I've studied cults, I've studied religions, and I outwardly said on YouTube that this is a cult. This is a cult where we're all going to get onto self-improvement. We're going to dedicate our lives to this. We're not going to hang out with our old Jeffrey, like loser friends anymore. And it went viral. It, it went so viral. I'm like the, the biggest ever cult leader of all time, basically. And mm. also like the modern day as well. So I've brought, I don't know, 100, 150 guys on top of mountains with me inside of Adonis School as well. We do like these events where, for example, we'll like, I'll, I'll lead everyone up to the tallest mountain in UK. And I remember we got to the top as well, actually. And one guy was like so happy. And he's like, I never even leave my house. And now I'm in the tallest mountain of our country. So the, the, very cool. Yeah. The, the, the things I've done as a leader for these guys has been incredible. And let me, if I can give you a tip for the guys who want to be leaders, it's, it's a reminder that I've had recently, which is a leader should always keep himself in the shoes of his followers. Never forget where your followers are. This was a mistake I made last year where I had you know, built so much success. I had been on this journey for years and I started to give advice based on where I was, which was like, oh, you know, guys, money's not that important, guys. Oh, you know, muscle's not that important, guys. Sex isn't that important, guys. And it's like, it's not fair to say that because it's like, I had those things. It's like being in the desert. Like I've got this big, big jar of water. You're thirsty. I'm like, no, no, bro, money, water's not even that. What is not, you don't even need water, bro. You've always got to remember like where the person you're trying to influence is. So let's say, there's a young guy watching this and he wants to help his little brother to become more productive. He sees his little brother on like TikTok or something. It's not fair for you to look at that and say, oh, that's stupid, whatever, whatever. Because your little brother, like if he doesn't see what's on TikTok, he's going to get bullied in school. You've got to put yeah, it into his true. position and, and think like, why is he doing this? One, he's got the addiction. Two, he's got like semi ADHD. Three, if he doesn't know these trends, he'll be perceived as low status in his, in his um, social group in school. So when you think of that, you're like, damn, like he's not a bad person for this. He's like, I, I want to help him in a certain way. So I've, I've got to find other ways that he can get the status and the sort of uh, inclusion that he wants. That's very, very interesting because you're looking at the symptoms of a bigger problem instead of looking at the main thing you see as a bad thing. So mm -hmm. it's not TikTok is bad, stop doing that. There's a deeper lying reason why he's doing this. For mm -hmm. example, he wants to fit in. He wants to be a cool guy. And I think we saw exactly the same thing with uh, Andrew Tate. Like the mainstream media decided, no, that's bad. That should be banned and he just needs to go away. But I was always wondering, like, even if we say, for example, like Andrew Tate is bad, we shouldn't look at him. That's fine. Don't we need to look at the underlying problem? Because the fact is a lot of young men are attracted to these type of messaging, which is a symptom of a bigger thing that's playing in the world, I think. And it was very interesting to me that we are like, only ban like the way it's perceived or, or the way it comes out through Andrew Tate, but we do not look at the deeper problem. Whereas, for example, in women, not making this uh, like a sex thing, you can see, for example, some things of the Kim Kardashians or stuff like this. We need to accept this because they need liberation and this is the symptoms of the need for liberation. It's very interesting to me that we are able to see this in women, but not in men. Because mm. in men, we're just like, nah, stop it skip don't look at this why do you think this is that's such a good point the rise of of andrew tate me e-man like these masculine influences it, it's a symptom it's a symptom of the real problem and the real problem is that men aren't happy or actually i'll, I'll rephrase that boys aren't happy boys have been fed lies from from birth we watched the Hollywood movies. They told us that if we are the nerd who obsesses over the girl, we'll get her. We tried it, didn't work. They told us be nice and, and act like friends to the girl. We tried it, didn't work. All of us, that's the thing, like any, any young guy watching this, all of us genuinely tried the advice that the modern world gave us. We all did. We all sat still mm. like little wimps. We all like, you know, didn't play aggressively. We 
tried to get the girl, we tried to make the money, we tried to become winners, but in, in society's advice, and it didn't work, but all of us gave it the attempt. That's why like so many guys are so unsatisfied with life because we did what they suggested and it led us to such a, a poor place. It was a playbook that didn't even work. That's why I think we're, we're seeing these symptoms of, of men who are rising up and telling, telling boys how to be men by living the, the actual masculine life rather than this weird feminine kind of pushover, you know, like be nice to everyone and treat her like a friend and, and you know, basically be fine with being a loser, be humble, don't push for your goals, don't be aggressive. We're told these things and, and it works. This is, that's why Tate is so popular. If a young man follows his advice, it works. It's as simple as that. You follow my advice, it works. It sounds crazy, sounds sexist, misogynist. It's, it's aggressive, whatever it is. It works. Mm. And I think that's why this, this kind of content, these influencers are getting so popular because for the first time in so many young men's life, they actually feel aligned to like their truth. Every step that they take to, for example, follow my advice on going to the gym and being more masculine, being more competitive, they're aligned to their real self. It's like they've just peeled back a layer of bullshit that was on them. And they're like, oh damn, this is who I'm supposed to be. You, you feel like right energetic. Like you start feeling, like you realize that you've lived your entire life kind of like a limp dick. Most boys have lived like that. Like they are like, like if you had to describe them in a weird way, most men live like that. Walking semis. <laughs> Not even the semis, honestly, like w walking ED, honestly. That's yeah. what some guys, but then when you see certain guys who look like walking erections, who, there's, there's guys who have like a hard dick personality and every guy wants that. Every guy actually like looks up to Andrew Tate, whether you like him or hate him, it's like every guy wants that kind of energy where you feel like you're full of yourself, where you feel like a strong man, you feel like you've got a level of certainty and safety. Everyone wants that and it intimidates many guys. But for the guys who have had that floppy dick lifestyle and then <laughs> taken a step towards this and had a bit more of this like, you know, masculine yeah. aggression, competitiveness, brotherhood, it feels amazing. And you're like, why did, why have they been telling me that this is evil, that I'm like a, I'm a bad person for this. Yeah, welcome mm. to the club. Like we're all toxically misogynist here, but it's like, we're not even talking about women. We're just talking about men just living lives with, with more zest, more energy, more competitiveness, more brotherhood, more masculinity. Why do you think that there's such a big misconception about what being an alpha male is? Because for me, getting a bit more into like the red pill community, being alpha male, there's a bit of a bad aftertaste mm -hmm. for a lot of people with these types of terms. Mm -hmm. But if you look at like, for example, Tate, if you start to get to know him a bit better, as far as you can know somebody online, I feel like he has a softer side to him as well. And he has a more thoughtful side to him as well, which you do not see at face value, but if you dig in a bit deeper, that, that's there as well. Why do you think so many people see Alpha Male as just like this big monkey, like Gorilla. smacking his <laughs> chest and just f being aggressive? Because I don't think that like, that's the full picture of Alpha Male. Yeah, of course not. But why is there such a big misconception? Yeah. Because look, when you see these guys who we can say the Alpha Males, yeah, sure, they'll get loud and they've got this ego and stuff, fine. They've retired their families. Anyone who's in their circle is taken care of. It's like, these are the things that like the, the people who hate on this side, they, they never talk about. It's the alpha male, like the, the sort of the man in charge. He's not just like the aggressive simpleton who's violent or whatever. He's also taking care of his people, he takes care of his tribe. It's just, it's being the leader of a tribe, isn't it? And so it, it's a shame where, because I think it just comes from I don't know, from feminism and the way we've been raised. Like, I remember those same movies we watched where the nerd gets the girl. Before the nerd got got the girl, what, what was happening? The jock had her mm -hmm. and the jock was the bad guy. And it, they, they created the narrative that every movie we all watched, the guy who actually got the girl or like, you know, who was with her originally was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. That guy, when you really think about all the jocks that you watched on these movies, he was actually a lovely, like he was just training really hard and he just didn't have time for this girl. And then this creepy fucking stalker keeps like staring at her getting changed and eventually he gets her. That's what they, they, they literally like told us that if you're this weird stalker obsessive guy, you'll get the girl. And that the, the jock who's just focused on his own sport is the bad person. When actually like that guy's like, he's the team captain, he's working hard, he's got friends and stuff and he's just a little bit too busy. In the real world, what happens is like the girl actually stays with that guy and that the other guy's just left on scene. Yeah. So we, we've just been fed like a load of bullshit that society acts like they don't want those men. 
doesn't matter what society says. What matters is how they actually respond to you. The best women, the most beautiful women, the most respectful women, they prefer those men. The yeah. best men want to be around those kinds of men as well. And you, and you say, okay, the society doesn't want that. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe fear. Maybe maybe because it's manipulation. Because that man should genetically be the best. When you have guys telling you how to be that man without the genetics, but through actions, mm -hmm. it's manipulation. Like, my, my physique is manipulation. I manipulate women with this physique because I wasn't born with it. It's not my genetics. Although when a woman looks at me, she knows I go to the gym. Her subconscious thinks that I've got like amazing genetics to look like this. She doesn't know that I've done fucking <laughs> lateral raises and everything, <laughs> obviously. Like, she knows it, right? But it's like, women in general want the sort of genetic superior man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you've worked for it, it's not through genetic. And of course there's value in working for it and stuff, but it's like in a primal way, that's what women actually want. They just want the genes of the best man. When you've got guys who are telling you how to fake that through hard work, maybe there's a sense of like disgust in women who are hearing that and they don't consciously think this, but subconsciously they're thinking, oh damn, like I'm attracted to this genetic kind of man. But Hamza, Tate, whatever, they're telling these men how to be that even though they're not that. So when, you know, you hear red pill stuff, red pill's like, you know, treat her like this, don't reply fast, whatever. That's the that's what like a genetic like alpha would do naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, Too busy. But it's manipulative yeah. when we do it, right? Because because we're not like, I'm not a genetic alpha, bro. I'm a fucking loser, right? It's like without self-improvement, I was a nobody, right? Without going to the gym. And so maybe there's a sense of like, I don't know, d disgust because they they feel manipulated. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that's maybe just a, like a far too high IQ kind of uh, idea, but I, I've always had that in my mind of, if I was a woman and I was really, really self-aware, I would feel some level of like ick knowing that guys were working so hard to be the kind of man that I'd be into. So this is why, for example, another part of the red pill is like act effortless. So when she asks yeah. me like, oh, how often do you go to the gym? I'm not going to tell on my workout routine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to act like a simpleton. Oh yeah, I, I go a little bit. Now I go every day at the same time. You know what I mean? Like every yeah, single yeah, day, I track yeah, every gram yeah, of rice. I, I literally know exactly what macros I'm eating and stuff. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah I go to the gym. <laughs> nice, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the same work with other men. No, it's, 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 I think it's the opposite with men. I think this is how it is. Men in your circle mm -hmm. respect your hard work. So if I, like me and Neil are in the Uber, I'm telling him I worked on this. He's telling he, he, me that he worked on this. I like him more because I can see he's working hard. Yeah. Men not in your circle are kind of like women as well, where you want to make it look effortless. It's one of the laws of power. Yeah. So to women and to men who aren't in your circle, you want it to look like you're not even working hard. Like you're casual with it. Like Iman shows this lifestyle really well. If you look at it on his Instagram, he works hard as fuck, but he's not going to like show you that on his Instagram. He's just going to show you like him partying and everything. If you're in his circle, if you like spend time with him, he, he does like seven meetings a day. He's working super hard. He, he won't even eat carbs for like six months of the year. He won't even like speak to people. He'll, he'll just be focused and dialed in. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, women are the same as well. You don't want them to know about much of the hard work. You want them to know about like your character, your success, and you want it to be like that it's so normal for you. That, oh yeah, yeah, you know, this other girl's into me, whatever. Oh, it doesn't matter. And she, you know, she sees that you're, you're really rich. Oh yeah, it's not that much. Because mm. it shows you're actually above that. Obviously, to your friends, you're like, oh, you guys, you know, I just won the, the, the school <laughs> games. <laughs> I'm on the internet. Yeah, you know, I just won. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> How do you keep like the balance between improving yourself, being aware of your usual behavior and showing better behavior or more efficient behavior mm. and staying true? Because yeah. we all have met the guy who is the alpha dude who in the essence does all the things that he needs to be doing, but he's a fucking loser because yeah. he's trying way too hard. Plus he's living a very empty life because if you're, trying to be everybody else except yourself, 100%, mm. I feel like you're gonna be an empty person. So how do you balance these two things? How do you stay authentic whilst on self-improvement? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question, honestly. Um, I, I got asked this by a student and I said to him, you know what? Going to the gym in a, in a certain way, it's not 
authentic. You had to almost like be told to go. But how do you feel when you go? How do you feel when you look at your physique? Like it's right. This is how we were supposed to do. <laughs> the same with hard work. Many young guys, it wasn't actually kind of authentic or natural for them to work hard. They had to like, you know, fight the uphill battle to be productive. How do you feel when you're successful? How do you feel when, when you have worked hard? Like it's right. Mm. So uh, another question we could ask is like, how authentic and natural would all this stuff feel if we were living genuinely healthy lives with like double the testosterone? So, you know, the, the guy who's who's struggling so hard to become an alpha male and everything, would it feel as inauthentic if he had healthy levels of testosterone? Probably not. If we were living how we were supposed to amongst our men in a, in a brotherhood with war, competition, would it feel inauthentic? No, of course not. Mm -hmm. It's just that like the modern world we live in has made it so... Uh, so there's so much friction to getting onto self improvement, working hard because there's so little friction to basically being a degenerate, to ordering some crappy food straight to your place. You don't even need to leave to get junk food, porn, and and stuff. So it's so easy, and so it's so frictionless to do the bad habits that I don't think it's a good metric to ask like, "Oh, does this feel natural for you?" Because in a weird way, like porn feels natural for guys. Like it, it just feels normal for them. I mean, it feels it. disgusting afterwards. But yeah, <laughs> but up, up until post not clarity and then video games. Yeah, and, and but this may be the perfect uh, analogy then, because post not clarity is the feeling you get after, mm -hmm. which isn't great. Mm -hmm. And for going to the gym, it feels forced at the beginning, but afterwards it feels great. Mm -hmm. Porn is exactly the opposite. It feels great when I start doesn't really when it ends. Yeah. So maybe that's the, the perfect way to look at it. So I think, like for most things, it's a great way to look at it. Just like, how do you feel after you've shown the new forced behavior? Mm -hmm. Because of the feeling after that is authentic and it feels good, then it's it might be good. Instant and delayed gratification. So mm -hmm. instant gratification feels good right now, like porn, video games, but it makes your life worse afterwards. Yeah. And many guys don't want to admit that. They don't want to admit that playing video games makes their life worse. But like the one hour, five hours you spend on it, you are slightly, you know, you've fried your dopamine, you feel a yeah. bit like a goblin and stuff. You stayed up late, you're hanging out with losers. Delayed gratification is usually quite hard right now. It's exercise, it's meditation. It's like going to speak to that girl. But afterwards you actually feel better. Yeah. And... I think, you know, if we talk about like mental health, for example, I think one of the reasons why there's so much like self-hatred in young men is because they just keep fucking themselves over with yeah. instant gratification. It's like, it's instant gratification is basically stealing your future self's happiness. Yeah. It's looking at 7 p.m. you today and saying, fuck you. <laughs> Literally, it's like, like it's looking at you next week when you, when you eat this cake and thinking, no, no, go fuck yourself. I remember watching like the series How I Met Your Mother and you had this guy was always like, I'll let future me deal with that. And that yeah, was his yeah. motto. So he's doing something today and he's like, I'll let future me deal with that. And that's the way a lot of people live. Mm. Like I'll do this now because I enjoy it now. And then future me has to deal with yeah. the bull crap. The and shit. then future use 25% body fat, shit skin, poor, broke. Of course you hate yourself. Yeah. No, yeah. the thing yeah. is when you've worked hard, of course you love yourself. I look at my, my younger self who's done what? thousands of workouts not for himself for me so think about like how much self-love i like i can't help but to be like so arrogant and narcissistic by normal people's standards because think about what younger me did i was born in poverty i became super wealthy i had like a binge eating disorder i had intense anxiety i did like hundreds of hours of meditation so that i don't have that anymore and it wasn't me who did that it was my younger self mm -hmm. so of course i like i, I have so much self-love whereas the average person has so much self-hatred for anyone who's watching, it's like, just be nice to your future self. It's the secret cure to depression, anxiety. Do it for your future self. Don't don't think about how it feels right now, the gym, meditation, or you want to watch porn. Just think, okay, I'm going to make tomorrow better. I'm going to make next year me better. I'm going to make, you know, next month me better. Then you work hard. Then you you delay gratification. You go to the gym. Going yeah. to the gym right now for many guys, it's so painful. It's so uncomfortable. It's so new. Not not watching porn is so it's like an uphill battle. Mm. But when you think, okay, it's it's for tomorrow. It's not for how I feel right now. The feeling will go. All that's left is the consequences of the actions. Like, did you did you train over the last ten years or not? I did. Mm. I've got a fucking sick physique. When I first started training, there was guys who I, I spoke to in high school. They didn't want to. And they were saying, oh, you know, it's too hard, whatever they gave for one work, oh, it's too painful, oh, it's going to take too long. I envisioned myself at 80 years old, still hench, still jacked, 
I walk, I, I always keep seeing myself like really old guy. I walk into the gym, everyone knows me and I'm strong as fuck. I'll, I'm doing it for that version of me. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do that. They just wanted to think about themselves. 10 years later, it's like, I have my dream physique and they look like weird, like estrogenic boys. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's a shame to live like that. And I think also for you, like you have a cult, right? You're a cult leader. Yeah. You have like hundreds. Now, how many people are in, in your discord? It was like 300,000. 300,000 people. Yeah. And they look up to you. Otherwise, they wouldn't join the Discord, of course. Yeah. But for them, you have to look good. You have keeps to, you accountable. Mm. Yeah, it keeps you accountable. Yeah. I have the same, like, when we have the episodes, like now, I want to look great. I want to wear the suit, be fit. If I look, like, fat on the mm. camera, I think, like, ah, I don't want to look like that. Right? So... Those things also keep you accountable. I think when young boys are searching for such things, like maybe other friends that are, have the same mindset, man, you you don't want to let them down mm. because then you let yourself down, right? Mm. It, it's brotherhood. And also, you know, we spoke before about uh, becoming a leader. A big part of being a leader is like the benefits you actually get. And we didn't speak about that, but I, I remember when I first started to feel like a leader in like early 2021, it's weird, like at this exact same time, that's when my beard grew. <laughs> and people will say, oh, it's a coincidence or whatever. But I, I knew going into that season of my life that I, I had guys who were looking up to me that it was weird. I said, my, my voice deepened, my, my beard grew. I think I grew taller, my, my shoulders went more wide, mm. more than it should have because you're developing as, as a man. Like what is a man if not for a, a person who's supposed to be a leader or at least like a competitive brotherhood? And it, it's, guys aren't living with this. Guys are living like in these basically solitary confinement is how most men live these these days, right? Most of their time is just by themselves, watching content, usually like bullshit, going to the gym, maybe going to school or whatever, but staying by themselves with a few loser friends. 90% of the day is completely alone. Mm. You don't have that brotherhood. The, if I work out by myself, honestly, I'm a bit of a pussy. Still, if there's someone else next to me, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm, you can probably zoom into like my hands. I've got literally cuts and blood all over my hands because of how, how how hard I grab like the weight when I'm training with people. It only happens. If you ever see me training by myself, I'll look like a bitch, bro. I'll just, <laughs> I'm such a pussy. If there's someone else next to me, I'm getting like 50% heavier weight mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll move it at the same time as them because it's just what men do. And it, and it saddens me that so many guys, including myself for so long, I lived without this. And I, I look back with so much like sadness for years of my life. I lived without like training with a guy, working with guys. It's like the highlight of my trip so far. I was like, Neil just got into the Uber. I was just smiling, talking about business. How <laughs> sick is that? It's just an Uber ride, bro. And I was like, so happy for it. Yeah, it's yeah, all, yeah. all you need is like a couple of your brothers working on the same kind of goals, training together, working mm. together. And it's like, that's where the accountability comes from. I'm not going to train like a bitch if I'm training with my friend. There was, there was this time, um, a few days ago, I was doing one of my workouts and I invited my friend to come. And before that, I actually thought, you know what? I'm going to skip a part of the workout, the squats today, because my knee kind of hurts, my back's kind of sore, right? <laughs> I hit every single fucking squat. I'm training with him. I'm not going to, oh, bro, you do the squats and I'm just going to, like, yeah, cut, what the fuck? I'm going to hit that. Like, if I'm training with a guy, I'm not going to just randomly bitch out. Mm. If I was by myself, I would have skipped it that day. Yeah. That's great, man. I'm curious. Uh, did you already meet Andrew Tate? No, I've not actually, not met him. I th he follows me on Instagram though. Yeah. That, was, that was a nice flex when he followed me. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to meet him? Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. yeah. What would be your main question you would have for Tate? Nothing comes to mind, you know. I wish I had like a really cool answer, a uh, cool question to ask, but to be honest, I, I've never been much of like a, a fan boy of, of anyone. I've never, I, maybe because I'm an influencer myself or something. So I've, I've never felt like, oh, I really want to meet this person. Mm -hmm. Like with the Alex and Mosey events and Sam Ovens and so it's, yeah, it's kind of cool and stuff. But I, I can't help but almost see them as like, kind of like equals in some way. Yeah. So it, it's mm -hmm. not like I'm going to fanboy and ask for, you know, a, a picture or anything like that. So I'm, I'm sure there'll be lo loads of interesting things. What came to mind then was like his kind of life set up with his woman. I know he's got children as well, but I think he doesn't live with them. And I find that quite interesting. Yeah. I think me and him might, might have like a similar personality style where like, if I live with my woman, it's like, 
it's not very good for me. I, I turn into like a, like an idiot, like a, like a, you know, complacent and stuff. And I've known that he lives with his brother, which I find very interesting because I think that's a very masculine, like um, powerful way to live when you don't live with women. Mm. So I'd probably ask about that. I was wondering uh, about this, actually. You were talking about having a brotherhood, which is very important for men. Actually, you usually see them creating this when they're younger. So they hang out with a lot of guys and they, mm. they push each other in some way. Sometimes it's pushing each other in a game. Other times it's in the gym. What I've noticed is that a lot of men, mainly, people that watch this channel as well, start creating a business and that starts consuming your time and then a bit more time and then even more time. And over time, you're just working with your business and you start seeing your brotherhood from the past less and less. Mm. Do you think it's important for men to keep seeing men in a non-work environment? You know, potentially, but I won't lie, I can't do that. I, for me, if it's non-work related, or non-fitness, basically non-goal related, mm -hmm. I won't carry the friendship. Simple as that. So for me, the, the new lesson that I've had is ma just make it make it work with your fitness, with your with your business. Mm -hmm. So like for example, this it's like there's like a connection being formed, mm -hmm. but it's also work at the same time. Yeah. Because what are we gonna do if it wasn't work? Like, oh guys, let's just like sit and and, and talk. Yeah, watch talk, football. Talk about <laughs> what, bro? Let's talk about work, and then you may as well record it for content. Yeah, and we're back yeah. here again. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the event I'm hosting today for Adonis School, it's like I wouldn't have traveled without it. When you're a masculine guy, it's like, what am I going to do when I travel? Like, oh, I'll just, I'll just work somewhere else. Like, yeah, you oh, need to I'll move with purpose in everything you do. Mm. I see Tate taking trips like this. I saw Iman. I see, um, I see guys in this space. I always used to see them that you know they'd, they'd get a bit viral and start going onto podcasts, and that was kind of like their like not holiday, but the, the trips they were taking. And a lot of the social life came from that. And I, I was always detached from that because I was in that mode as well of like, okay, hard work, stay at home, stare into the computer screen. If I could change something now and go back in time, I would have added a lot more of the social work. Yeah, It's like, I, I accomplished a lot in the last 24 hours coming here. I've made the lecture. I've got like all my students coming out. I've done two podcasts. And so it's like, it's fulfilled me. It, it's been a profitable trip, but it's been fun as well. It's like, I, I've laughed more in this conversation than if we were just like sat not working. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, okay, but this is productive as well. This is part of our mission. It's part of our goals. Mm -hmm. I think men men are inherently goal striving. And I think that time away from your goals can be nice every now and then. But I think that honestly for 90, 95% of our time should be just chasing our goals. Because what else are you going to do? Like, oh, I just want one hour to relax and unwind. It's like, just have a podcast. It feels the same way. It's, it's, this is more unwinding and, and, and energetic, energizing mm -hmm. than you know being sat around wasting time. The only other yeah. thing I'll say is like, Spending time with women, that's a pure celebration. I'm not in work mode for that. That's when you're, you're purely present and you just want to flirt with them and you're just having a good time. But that's maybe like 5% of your time during the week. For the rest of it, I, I really think that men need to be spending more time with men. There's a question that I've been asking everyone recently, which is if you imagine your dream life, what percentage of your time do you spend alone in solitude? And what percentage of your time do you spend with other guys and then with women? What would you say for that? I think alone. Alone, I think it's always good to have some time alone. So that would be like twenty percent. Mm. I think for work, you have like um, forty percent, oh, fifty, sixty. I think with my with my woman, I think 20, 10, 15. It really depends on. If you're living with her, uh, if you what count you're doing. the sleeping hours, it, it goes up. Then it's like thirty percent. <laughs> yes, but the time I think with the boys goes. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> but I think like brotherhood, that must be like uh, the biggest time. Exactly, because yeah. your productivity will get really high. And maybe like I live now with three other entrepreneurs, and we just work all the time. And when I'm not working. They are working, and I think, oh shit, I have to work, <laughs> right? But this on a on a competitive level, it's on a good way, not on a stressful mm. level or something. So, um, I think that's really good. I think it really depends on the phase of your life as well. So I've been with my girl for uh, eight year plus now, and I feel like in this phase of my life, I'm really focused on building 
worth as a man, net worth, all those things. And in those phases, I think spending more time with the guys that push me as well is very important. But I can also imagine that <clears throat> when we get kids, if we're so lucky to have them, then the goals would maybe change. Like, for example, if I have 10 or 50 million and I get kids, I would be more focused on giving them a great upbringing and teaching them the ways of life. And then I probably percentage-wise would spend more time with my wife and my kids as to with the guys. So I think it's very phase-based as well. So for example, with Tate, I think he does it very different as in living with his brother and still having children living apart from him. I'm very interested to see what kind of effects this has on, on him, on the kids, on the relationship, on the way they develop. So yeah, I, I think it's hard to say right now. But in this phase, yeah, spending time with, with the guys that push you is very important and I think I should be uh, quite a big percentage of the time. Yeah, exactly. And then when we ask guys what they're actually spending time on, what the split is like, it's basically like 90 to 100% alone. Yeah. Solitary confinement. Mm. Yeah. To, to get that kind of treatment, you have to first be sent to prison and then you have to hurt someone in prison. <laughs> so you are like the worst of the worst. And that's the punishment of like the worst members of society. That's what men are doing th to themselves voluntarily. Yeah. Just living alone. So just for me to, to have this uh, visualization, I've never felt really lonely as in really being alone for long stretches of time. Have you had this? Like really having no friends and just being alone for a whole week? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I've never had this. But I imagine there's also maybe a lot of guys that do have friends and people around them, but mm. still put them in like mental isolation. Mm. So you are with people, so you're not alone, but the, you're just not connecting with them. Mm. So you're just being there as in, I'm not lonely. Yeah. Actually, you're very lonely. Yeah. So what do you think the difference is between completely, what is worse, being completely lonely as in having no one around or being mentally lonely? Honestly, probably mentally lonely. <coughs> Like the, the only thing more lonelier than being alone is being with people who make you still feel alone. I, like I, I get flashbacks from like being in university and like smoking weed with guys. There's was, there was one time we went to like this guy's place and it's like, imagine five guys sat on like a small couch. Everyone still got their jackets on. No <laughs> music or anything. We're all just like smoking whilst what two of them play like FIFA or something. And I was just like, it was just so odd. It was like, they weren't even talking to each other. There's no conversations or anything, no bonding moments. Yeah, I, I I would rather just be alone and, you know, be focused on business and everything and just be working, studying, whatever, than being around what I call like Jeffrey friends, <laughs> guys who are, who are doing all the bad habits and you just kind of keep them around because they're the only friends. Basically, there's, there's like three chapters of your life. There's like the Jeffrey friends chapter when you're kind of a Jeffrey, but then you're friends with all the losers as well. And you start making some progress, but they don't. And then you've got to make the decision of like, do you cut off those old friends? And often on average, most guys will just wait months to do it. You know, uh, you'll try and get them onto self-improvement to be productive business, but they won't do it. Eventually you realize you're just gonna have to cut them off. And there's this transition period where you basically have no new friends because you're just not that capable enough to attract those high tier people just mm -hmm. yet. So you've got to go through that transition. But for many of us, we we fear that because you, you're, go in completely alone that's there's a tribal pain to like leaving your mm -hmm. your tribe there so um it's very difficult for guys the amount of guys who ask me for advice and they say my, my friends basically bully me they take drugs i used to be like them but i don't want to be like them anymore and the advice i have to give is like you've got to cut them off try and get them onto self-improvement business fine but it's like it'll never work it's like how, how fucking hard is this when you've wanted this right how what you've wanted to be a businessman you've wanted mm -hmm. to be productive to, to get into high performance and it's it's so difficult. Imagine trying to get the guy who doesn't even want it. The guys who like, who are fine with just partying, drinking, the guys who are fine with like, just wasting their lives. You can't change them. It's been hard enough for you to get onto self-improvement. Yeah. So you've got to go through that transition period. And it's, that's where the, the loneliness comes in, but it's valuable as well. I, I'm not criticizing being alone and being in solitude here. Cause that's where your best work will come from. That's where all those ideas come. That's when you learn who you are and not like the perception you've had of yourself based on other people's um, idea of you. But mm -hmm. if we're being honest, I don't think anyone would say their dream life is where, the, where they're alone 90% of the time. No, of course not. No, I think like a great metaphor of this is like, you live in a village, like really small, you know, all the people, but 
you know that your future will not lie in a village. You just know it. Your goals are not there. You can never find it there. So, but you know, like one city, like the big city, but you have to travel to the city. And like your old friends are the moments that you are walking from the village to the city, but then you're turning back. And those are the moments that you're really like stuck, right? You want to go, you go on an adventure to the big city, you're not there yet. And when you're like on 50% of the journey, you go back again. Mm. And I think the moment that people really are um, changing themselves is when they just leave everything behind. This, uh, the village, the, the people that they know, um, and they go on the trip, the journey, all alone. But that's the moment that, that you like learning the most things. And then they, they go to the city, and in the city, they will eventually meet new people, new friends, and create a new life for, the for themselves. That's powerful. One of the, the fastest ways to, to bump up your progress, move somewhere where no one knows you. Yeah. Like, as long as you've been working hard, let's say there's a, one of your viewers lives at home right now, and he's been working hard, he's been productive, but he feels like although he's made more progress, people don't treat him like that. Mm. The moment you leave and you go somewhere that people don't know, it's like you snap up and update to where you really are. Yeah. But you don't get that when you stay in your own hometown, when you stay next to your family, friends, siblings. It's like, if you go to the gym and you're in like, yeah, I'm, I'm like Andrew Tate, I'm an alpha male and stuff. Mm -hmm. Your siblings are going to call you out. They're not going to let you have that. Like, you yeah. know, your parents are still going to treat you like that. Your old friends will still think you're, you're like the video game loser, whatever. But when you leave and you go somewhere where no one knows you, th these new people only know this current version of you. They don't, they've never seen you before. So when I moved out to university, when I was like 19 years old, I got to update my self image and identity immediately. And I became literally like 50% more confident, social, and everyone believed it. Just literally three hours ago, I had to act way more reserved than I was. You know, I couldn't like be myself, I couldn't wear the kind of clothes I wanted to because my family would judge me or something. But it, it can be very powerful. It, you're still around other people, but it's just go to a different environment. Yeah. But for, for the kind of like audience you have, who are these high performance guys seeking success, it's one of the most important decisions of your life is like where you move to. And I, I think it's very valuable if a young person moves somewhere, no one knows them. Yeah. This is one of the things that I regret as far as I have regrets. I don't think regrets are very alpha to have because I think it's like, but we can get to that later. It is not moving or doing like uh, this studying abroad thing. I was very scared of it when I was younger because I didn't like uh, getting to know new people, being in an environment I didn't know. I was very scared of it, so I never did it. And now afterwards, I'm like, I took a very valuable lesson from myself by not doing that. I'm wondering, how do you look at regret? Do you have regret about things? Mm -hmm. In some ways, I have a, a notes that's pinned on my uh, iPhone notes right now, like my biggest mistakes over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And I think regret is almost valueless to just think about something that's sad that happened. But I think it can be valuable if you use it as a reminder to not make the same mistake again. So that's how I seem to do it. So I've got a yeah. list written down of some of them is like um, losing the desire for more in business and fitness. I've had a few periods over the last few years where I'll just stop everything. I'm like, oh, more money won't change my life. More muscle won't change my life. And then what do you think happens? I, I get complacent, lose progress. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, damn. Like, you know, muscle is really cool actually. Like <laughs> now that I'm fat. Like, so I, I, I've, I could be on probably about double this, the um, monthly recurring revenue right now, probably about 300K if I never like slacked for a couple of months last year. Um, same with YouTube as well. There was times when I've had momentum and I just stopped because I just got, you know, kind of used to it. I didn't respect or appreciate mm. how important momentum is. So I, the reason is like, I've got a list of these things that I've done, which I've, I look back, not, not with so much as regret, but just the biggest learning lessons of like the biggest failures, mistakes that I've made. Yep. So I think if, if someone's constantly thinking back with regret, I don't think that's valuable. In fact, I just had a call with someone yesterday and he was talking about the old pains he had with family and everything. And I, I asked him if he's ever read the book, Psycho-Cybernetics. 
Have you guys? So I've heard about it, but I've no. never read it. Very good. It's a, it's one of the first self improvement books ever written, like nineteen thirty. Really, and it's a book on your self image, like your identity, how you see yourself, and it speaks of our mind is like a goal striving mechanism. The point of our brain, our our mind, is to just put in a goal that we want the universe and our body to move us towards. So the idea is whatever we think about, we will start moving towards it. Problem is so many people think about the negative things, the past things, the traumas, the pains, the times they've been doubted by someone, this person said this. Imagine if someone's got those thoughts in their mind and then they're gonna go walk past their family member. How do they look? How are they presenting themselves? How are they talking? Like in a way that it's gonna happen again, right? That that young kid who's who's you know father always criticizes him and he's constantly thinking about it. He's gonna be walking with like you know little shitty posture. He's gonna be avoiding his dad's eye contact and stuff. It's gonna happen more. What's interesting is if you actually create like a fake mental movie of what you want to really happen, you will actually start to like manifest that. You truly will. I know manifestation law of attraction sounds like weird, mm -hmm. but truthfully, like in private <laughs> when you're sat there. If you start thinking a sexual thought, not touching anything, your dick gets hard. Your body responds as if it's true. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you want your body to respond to you being like a confident, successful guy? Even on, on the ride here, I'm, I'm closing my eyes, visualizing like a nice like, friendly meeting with you guys. Imagine if I visualize like every failure that I had, imagine my, my energy, how different, like <laughs> yeah. how is that gonna serve me, right? Yeah, that's, that's stupid that's as fuck, really right? True, but there's yeah, people who'll spend their entire fucking lives just thinking about the regrets and the pains and stuff. You true. should learn from them. You should spend like, you know, an hour journaling. Okay, oh, I messed up last year. Okay, I've got to fix this, fine. But 90, 99% of your thoughts should be basically like fake mental movies that you're literally just making of like what you want realistically to happen. So another example is, let's say there's a cute girl in the gym. You want to speak to her. The average guy will get the idea, oh yeah, I should cold approach. But then he'll start to think about what he should say to her. Should I say this? Should I say this? What if someone looks? Now, he's most likely not even going to go speak to her now just because he's already put himself in, a, in an insecure, overthinking frame. But if he does speak to her, mm -hmm. What's his body gonna look like now when he's literally been thinking about like, oh, people will look at me, what should I say? He's gonna go over with the kind of energy of a guy who's uncertain. Why not just like make your brain get you to what you want, which is visualize her smiling as she gives you back your phone with her number in it. Now the energy you go up with is a guy who's already got her number. It's like now, now how is she gonna respond to you? It's like, you're already confident. If I go speak to a girl, I always go with this energy of like, I'm inviting them into the fun. They've been living a boring life without me. And I'm like an old friend that they're so happy to meet. I visualize like she's genuinely so, so happy to meet me. It's like, well, how's my energy now? Yeah, sure, I'm, I'm a dick, I'm an arrogant, whatever. But it's like, how's her en my energy when I walk up? I'm confident, I'm, I'm like, like exuding confidence and status, reassurance. It, it's the same with, with honestly, as much as possible through your day, you wanna be visualizing the end results. I, f I find this stuff fascinating. There, there was a study that found two groups. One group actually goes to the basketball court and trains basketball. Mm -hmm. The other group visualizes it. They both had the same level of improvements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How insane is that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very crazy because at face value, try to explain something like that yeah, to a person that yeah. is not like, like. in the <laughs> self-development there. Like, he thinks you're crazy, what the man. fuck yeah. are you talking about? But you truly notice it like with the, I mean, everybody knows this analogy, of probably like the four minute mile. Mm, yeah. It's the thing of, if you see somebody else achieve it, it gets way more achievable for you. But why not create the image in your head that it's achievable and then it gets way more achievable. It's the same thing we talked about earlier of seeing a guy you know, in real life, be successful. Mm. It gets way easier to tell yourself, no, it's not a scam, I know this guy. Mm. Actually, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's the way the attitude you should have to a lot of things. That's why we've been blessed. I just caught myself a couple of weeks back, I was looking through like this Forbes thing in the Netherlands we have, it's called Quote. So it's the richest 500 people from the Netherlands. <laughs> and I was like, let me check like what number 500 is. So the lowest of the richest. And I caught myself thinking, that's not that much. It was like a hundred million. I could do that. Even though like five years back, I was doubting if I would ever be able to become a millionaire because I just didn't know if it was possible. But then I met a lot of people who were, and I was like, those are not very special people. They just work hard, take mm -hmm. action. They're just like me. So that's a tip I would give to like people, expose yourself to the thing that you want to achieve because by exposing it becomes real. 
And once it becomes real, it's very easy, or at least much easier, to see yourself accomplish it as well. That's the power of your belief is is amazing. Like you said, the four minute mile. You know, mine was was um, I was in high school, and all of my time in high school, I thought that because I was brown skinned, I was ugly. I genuinely had this solid belief. Why? Because any time I had seen brown people on TV, they were always bad. It was immigrant this, it was terrorism this. Uh, I had only saw negative things, Muslim this. I experienced a lot of racism, right? And I was certain I'm ugly, I'm brown-skinned. It's as simple as that. One day, this this boy band go viral called One Direction. Mm-hmm. They're like a band in, in UK. And they had one guy from Pakistan called Zayn Malik. He was like so attractive to these girls that on Facebook back in the day, they would download his pictures and post it on their own social media of like, you know, the the heart emojis and the love icon and everything, right? Yeah. That was the day where I just realized like I was being a bitch. There's another guy who's got the same thing that I've got, but he's actually attractive. It's, uh, there's so many guys from India who ask me, oh, you know, but bro, I'm from India, I can't make money. There's so many billionaires in India. Look True. at the CEOs of like most of the companies. They're all Indian. Yes. What do you want about? Have some respect for your fucking country. What is this? <laughs> like, oh, there's the amount of guys. Oh, I can't, I can't get girls because I'm short. Is there a short guy who fucks? Yes, but no, no, no. Yes, there is. Make it happen. Yeah. I can't make money because I'm in this country. Is there a, a billionaire in your country? Yes, make it happen. Simple as that. If there's another guy who has your handicap and has made it happen, it's not your handicap. It's that you're being a bitch. Simple. I was being a bitch. I was 14 years old refusing to like improve my hair because it's not going to make a difference because I'm brown skinned. Mm. And these days it's even worse. Like, have you guys seen Black Pill? No, I Black Pill? No, man. It, so the Red Pill is kind of like, okay, just be alpha, you can get girls. Black Pill is kind of like, just be genetically attractive. If you don't have a certain bone structure, you can't get girls. That's what their belief is. So that they they analyze. They've got pictures of me and everything. They'll be okay. So Hamza's got like he's got oh, this, I've seen this, this like this on facial YouTube. expression and stuff. This is good. Literally he's down got, to like, the percentages of like your forehead yeah, to your eyebrows. They'll yeah, yeah, literally put it. like squares and stuff and like analyze and and this is as attractive as you can possibly be. Okay, Hamza's like a three out of ten. When I used to make my my <laughs> original videos, right, it, I put them in a weird position because they had this thing of brown people aren't attractive, and I knew that's fucking bullshit because I've experienced it myself. You know that whole belief myself but yeah I, I put these guys in the weird position it's like this internet subculture they started to review my face and say okay he's a three out of ten and they they believe that you can't improve your attractiveness it's just genetics then i started to improve my attractiveness and i put them in an uncomfortable position where now they have to rate me higher then i started to attract like beautiful women and then put them in an uncomfortable position because how can you like it, it basically I, I i ended up like embarrassing a few of their people but the point was that every day that there's there's these guys who will comment saying, oh, but Hamza's this. Oh, but I can't do it because I'm five foot five. Oh, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Indian, I'm brown, I'm black. I've got this hair, I've got this, I'm short. I've got this navel, canvel, eye shape or some shit. I can't get girls. All you need to do is see one guy who's got it. Go on, like this, I don't know, the weird shit they say. You've, you've seen those videos, it's like, oh, this eyelid shape is like, you can't get girls if you've got Yeah, this. man, it, they came down with some details. I was yeah. like, I've never even thought about these yeah, details. Like, really? yeah, <laughs> like the depthness of your eyes yeah. and shit. I was like, Whoa. I wonder what my score would be. Yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> pay people to like, to analyze your face and tell you if you're gonna be a virgin or not. Apparently. <laughs> you sat apparently, there with your girlfriend, yeah. he's like, yeah, you're, you're done, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and everything just gets reversed. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Hamza, I was wondering about a thing we spoke about quite, I think, maybe an hour back, but how long do you know Iman now, Iman Gachi? Um, I think I first spoke to him in 2022. Yeah, so you've seen him go through quite some growth yeah. in the few years. Yeah. So we were talking about different types of behavior and tips you need to follow through the different levels of business. And I was really wondering if you could take us to like what you've seen in Iman. Because he goes from like being worth a couple of million to 10 to 30 to now I think even 100 million plus. What changes did you see him make? And what growth did you see him go through that shows like the different levels? Like for example, when we spoke to him, I think one and a half year or two years back, he was talking about when he started, he was like in the morning, no phone, meditation, a breathing exercises, this, and he was like, at this moment in time, I wake up, get my phone, yeah. Slack, calls, and just start going. So that's a very different phase as to the start grind mode. And I was wondering if you 
if you had it, could give some more insight into how he grows through the phases and what's the difference. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good point. And um, I've actually went through the same kind of transition as well, actually, like having the massive self-improvement morning routine. You, you need it for level one when your brain mm -hmm. doesn't work and you, you need to like, you know, journal and everything. These days I still do a lot of the self-improvement stuff, but it's like a lot less and it's a lot more like phone working technology, messaging this guy, message this guy, message this guy. For Iman, I, to be honest, I didn't know too much of him before 2022. I, I just kind of knew that, you know, he had some program he sells. He had like 100,000 YouTube subscribers and he made most of his money from just paying for adverts to his to his funnel. But then in, in 2022, he took YouTube seriously. So that's when I did a little collab with him. I flew over to Dubai, we recorded some videos together. And then I did another one later on that year. The biggest thing I can say is the importance of team. He just doubled down on like this high level YouTube team in 2022. He got like a full-time editor. He got the, I think he already had Tristan, the, the videographer guy, but like he, he got three thumbnail guys. He hired about 50 TikTok editors, <laughs> some, something crazy. Like 50 yeah, he's putting out like something, 7K videos yeah, a month or something. Some, something like 30 or 50, like and he was yeah. paying each one, 1.5K each. And they, they would post multiple shorts a day and then send people to his like main channel and stuff. So it was just the importance of team. He, he took over like wild. He was he was on 150K, 200K subs. I was on like 300, 400K. It was more like YouTube was my thing and like, you know, agency stuff was his. And then motherfucker hit 1 million subs before me. And then like 2 million way <laughs> really? before me. Now he's yeah. on 4 million. And it's Damn. like, respect. I, I hate yeah, him again yeah, for yeah. a little while. <laughs> like, yeah. like when I first saw his advert and then, then I was like, oh yeah, I hate him. I had to learn the lessons. Like, no, no, learn. Like he got a really good team. He put in a lot of work, a lot of investment into this. Mm. And I think this is what really exploded his net worth. Like I remember his earlier 2022 videos, he said he was worth like 10 million or something. Now I see some stuff where it's like 80 million. So he's, he's went up by 50, 60, 70 million in, in one year or so. Um, and yeah, his YouTube funnel has been incredible. Yeah. You know, the, one of the things that, which is most iconic about him, which many people don't speak about enough is he's been one of the first guys who's, who had the bravery to just release a full on VSL directly on YouTube. You've seen the, you know, the video he links to. For sure. That's like, Every YouTuber's wanted to do that. None of us have had the, the gigantic balls to do that. And here's yeah. this guy, he's got 6 million views on it. If that one video alone has probably made him like over 10 million, nice. which is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so insane. what is your obstacle to go 10 times harder? It's me, honestly. It's, it's like I have an entrepreneurship ADHD. I constantly will change my mind about like, like another way to explain is let's say in fitness, I'll constantly want to bulk or cut and I'll keep changing it. And I've been like this for a while and yep. it wasn't so apparent in the smaller days. In fact, it actually helped me nowadays. It's like it, I'm the enemy of our growth. I'll make some progress and I'll stop desiring more because I'm not that much of a materialistic guy. I don't like, I usually I don't even wear the Rolex. I wear like my little Casio 30 pound watch. I don't spend that much money. Like, you know, I'll, I'll still spend money on food, whatever, but I don't spend anything crazy. Not yet anyway. And so for me to desire more money, it's like, it hasn't really been there. Mm. And so when you already make over a hundred thousand a month, it's like, and you've retired everyone anyway, it's been hard to like give a shit about more business success. So all of it, like I'm the constraints. I'm like the guy who's running around the business, setting fires to stuff and like randomly turning off all the, the power plant that we have on. And it's like my brother's running after me, turning it back on the <laughs> fire extinguisher. Like, okay, well, what, what fire do we have to put out that Hamza's yeah. done? I'm getting into like arguments with people online and shit. Like it, it, it's all on me. And, <laughs> and so practically this is why, so the level I've gotten onto now, it's like adding meditation back in as a priority because ah. meditation in a micro uh, way will make you more focused in what you're currently what you want to be focused on. Mm. And in a macro, it means that you stick to that big goal. So this entrepreneurship ADHD that I have is like meditation is actually the weird autistic like thing that I need to do. It's just constantly focusing on one point of, of your body. Mm. So I've added that back in. That's also a very interesting thing as we, like lessons we've learned from speaking to great minds and, and you've spoken to a lot of them as well. It's like working hard, taking action, but it's also of doing more of less. Mm. So do two things, but do a lot of them yeah. and don't do 20 things and a little bit of them. And that for us and seemingly for you as well, that's a lesson that just keeps coming back. Yeah. So some things start working, you start getting enthusiastic, you start doing more. And then at some point you're like, I need to start cutting again. Mm. Stop this, stop this, focus on the main thing again. It's interesting to see that those things keep coming back. 
like yeah it, like it's a like a record. universal thing of successful people. it is I, i've seen really it. it's just subtracting I've, I've found successful people are, are ruthless when it comes to subtracting stuff out of their life like if they can't see like making money with you they won't speak to you for six months straight mm -hmm. if they if they feel like they're slightly slowing down because of their girlfriend they'll split up really yeah they, they made some products but realize it's not good they'll drop it straight away refund everyone yeah, uh, I, I go through this myself like every month or every two months I'll do like an 80-20 analysis where I'll find what's the biggest like bang for my buck yeah. with um, what's what's getting me you know the growth on YouTube success whatever and I'll start to find like the stuff which isn't actually getting me that much of an ROI and I'll, cut, I'll subtract it out e like ruthlessly like yeah. I was doing kickboxing like martial arts subtracted it out it was distracting from my other bigger goals it was taking too long I was um, I, I, I made a paid community like a low ticket one five dollars a month making like 20k a month from it a quarter of a million a year pretty sizable chunk destroyed it refunded everyone mm -hmm. just because it was like taking too much bandwidth because yep. it, uh, you guys read essentialism i haven't no have you know oh I'm still on my uh, reading list the the drawing of it is if maybe you could have it up on screen when yeah, you post this but it's like a, it's like a circle with loads of little lines and you're not making any progress then the other one is a circle with just one line and it's just five times longer, 10 times longer. That's the one. To, to get success in anything, including like even building muscle, you have to hit a certain threshold. But if you do too many things, you just can't get to that threshold. So you've really got to subtract. This is why like for so many guys, is they're in... Um, they're in school, they're in work, but they want to create a business and, and they just don't have the bandwidth to do that. So something's got to give. It's like you might need to start skipping the gym. Yeah, yeah. So one of the last things I was wondering about, I think it could be very interesting. What is a peasant behavior you still like do or enjoy? Oh, I like chocolate, bro. Chocolate. I love, I love chocolate. Like last, um, last week I've been having, like my mom goes out and buys like, you know, the fanciest boxes of chocolate in like the nice superstore where like it's a selection and everything one or, or three of those with like a cup of tea or coffee or something. I love that stuff, bro. I, I, I'm like, I'm a big eater, bro. I always have been. So that's always been my worst habit is like every now and then I'll have like a week or so where I'll, I'll go to like a lot of bakeries, cafes, get a lot of desserts and stuff. Or I, I do it in like a non dirty degenerate way. Mm -hmm. So there's like dirty degenerate. It's like, oh, you go to the store, you just buy the normal chocolate bar. You eat it like a goblin next to the TV <laughs> or something. If you ever saw me eating chocolate, you'd, you'd think I was like an interesting person. Like I literally, I stare at it. I'll take like the tiniest bite. Then I'll like melt it with the coffee or something. I'll sit mm -hmm. there with my eyes closed and everything. And it, I love it, but it's like, it ends up giving me like spots and stuff. Cause I usually only yeah. eat meat. Mm. So I, I notice the difference now. If I have like 10 grams of sugar, I notice, and I'm, I'm just thinking like, damn, people live like that. People live with, with 100 grams a day. So I've, I've cut that out again, but it'll, it'll only be like a few more days before I go back on it. <laughs> You've become the refined degenerate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. It, it, nothing, nothing crazy these days, to yeah. be honest. The, probably that's one of my like worst peasant behaviors. Anything else, what, what else can I expose? Yeah, but I mean, every now and then I'll drink and stuff. No, not much. I didn't drink at all in 2023. Like, I don't I don't think I even, apart from New Year's, I didn't drink through the entire year. And in this year, I actually made a weird um, resolution, like a, a goal to actually drink a little bit more. Nothing crazy, nothing dirty, beer or whatever. But I want to have like some more late nights, some, some more social events. I want to go on oh. dates and have some wine and stuff. I'm not going to like, you know, get drunk or anything. But I, I miss that. I miss being like a normal human being who goes out and like yeah. stays up past his bedtime. I was telling you guys, like I, I go to sleep like 6 p.m. for like <laughs> six months straight. And I just made like yeah. over a million dollars in the last yeah. few months. It's like, let me just stay up past 8 p.m. bro. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to be a little chaotic. Yeah. You have to be a little bit that, uh, that beast, right? Yeah. And I think maybe with your... Uh, with Adonis, right? If you meet up with the other guys, be very productive. Do so, uh, do almost awesome things, and then maybe the last hour do some drinks. You never can, know yeah. what what that uh, will I've, bring. Of course, I've noticed that like the most disciplined, successful individuals I know are also by choice sometimes the biggest degens there yeah. are drinking yeah. liters of vodka yeah. and just yeah. going all out. Yeah. And I think that's the, the thing for a lot of entrepreneurs, successful people, they're, they're living in extremes. 
yeah. can be very oh, good 100%, extremes. One hundred percent. But there can be some detrimental yeah. extremes as well. Yeah. I don't know a single balanced successful guy. No. Not at all. Never met one. No. And like a lot of like brokies talk about, oh, you need balance, moderation and stuff. Never heard a rich guy say that. Unless he's lying to the peasants to like make him <laughs> like him. But like never seen a rich guy live like that. It's always like like you've seen with Eman's monk modes and stuff. It's like mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't get a haircut for six months last month last year. For six months I looked like a like a five out of ten or something, <laughs> bro. Like my beard's all groomed out, neck hair and stuff. Yeah. Didn't even go to the gym, just did little workouts at home to so I could work fourteen hours a day on my business. Mm. And then it's like, okay, I'm going to Bali to be a degenerate for like two months. I'm gonna go smoke weed, I'm gonna have cafes, whatever. Yeah. It, 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 it's crazy. I've never seen a balanced, successful guy. No, and how much yeah. they say, like, oh, moderation is key and stuff. They are they are sober than drunk. They're yeah, never yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, There's no nine between. to five, oh, I'll work for a balanced amount of hours. Now no. they yeah. wake up and work till they go to sleep. Yeah. I think that's the thing also with like, those type of people is knowing yourself well enough to know if I start, I'm not gonna drink for a whole year mm. because of, if I start, I don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> so it's That's better just to not yeah. drink at all. It's like all in or all out. Mm. There's no in between. Like it's like the same when uh, you used to have like the old wars, and then you're gonna um, like. Have you seen uh, the series Vikings? No. No. Uh, the Vikings are gonna rob the English people, but they will will be like out for like six months, a year, sometimes even multiple years, and then. They are like on war, but when they come back, they relax, they drink, they do mm. stuff. And I think like the same is for, for us, right? For men, like you have moments that you really have to focus and then you really have to deep dive in. In the weekends, you also just have to work, but maybe once a month or once like every three mm. months, go out, go crazy, be a beast. And then, then you're like rest again and you go out and work again. I get, I think it's like a circle. Every three months or so will be good for you, right? Maybe. That's I think we have that also, right? For sure. <laughs> we work a lot and then every now and then we go really crazy. And I think that makes for a better life experience as well. Because like, the mundaneness of like a nine to five, where it's all basically the same, maybe with a little bit of like a hype for the Friday or something. And then that's that's it. Your days disappear. There's no period that you look back to like, mm. whoa, that was yeah, intense. That's the thing. So there's times where I've worked out three hours a day and I'll always look back to those moments. I've always got stories to tell. Like my hands were like, kind of like now, like my, my yeah, hands yeah. were bleeding. I had scars and everything. I was jack. I was so lean and everything. I'll always look back to that. Then there's times where I partied really hard and I was so social and, you know, I was surrounded by friends and stuff. If you've just had the same exact mundane gray experience yeah, all yeah, throughout, yeah. it's like you miss out the flavor. Like if you mm-hmm. imagine all the flavor you're ever going to taste in your life, if it was all mixed into one clump and you just had that, it, it wouldn't be special. No, nope. but it's the variety that makes it so. It that's is true, true. That's true. One last thing: um, you are going to America to Alex and Sam. Um, what is? What are the things that you're gonna do there? We already know that. So we've got we uh, March thirtieth, one day with Hamozi. So we go to his new office that they've just built. Mm-hmm. Spend a day there talking about school and. They said um, they're gonna record like a nice clip of him getting like a big trophy, passing it to me and stuff. So that'll be kind of fun Very to record. Cool. Ah. And then, uh, yeah, I'll spend like the day with the, those guys, with the other school winners as well. And then around that time, I think I'll fly off to Austin to go see Chris Williamson as well ah, and go nice. do his podcast again. Cause I was on it on like 200K and yeah, he's really? got 1.5 million. He's now. growing he's rapidly so as well. well. So yeah. hard. Man. So it's interesting well. to see all those guys find their own niche as well. Mm like Diary of a CEO, then Christian Williamson, Huberman, all just finding their own pockets to fit in. Yeah, it's incredible growth. I've been on yeah. Joe Rogan twice as well. So yeah, I can't wait to go speak to him again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would yeah. you like to be on Rogan sometime? I, I've, I've got imposter suit. I don't know what I'd talk about, bro. Yeah, so, you, you know, you could work hard, bro. Like, <laughs> like, well, like, there's a real man who hunts and stuff in yeah, here. I am yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you know, so one time I was doing push-ups. And like, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah man, it would be interesting, though. I'd like to talk to Joe Rogan sometime. Not even on the pod, but just like, because it's interesting, because I've listened to him talk so much that it's just... It almost feels like we did have some conversations, even though I'm just a random guy listening to him and just he shaking doesn't hands. really know who I am. Just shaking hands with him, talk a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. go to his uh, comedy club, yeah, watch yeah. a little bit. Watch Joey Diaz. 
Completely Joey Diaz. Yeah, go yeah. crazy. Do you know Joey Diaz? No. This is the I fat guy. Yeah, it, yeah, he's very funny. Very funny so, guy. Last question I have because I need to know, and really this is the last, last question. <laughs> what about the Fight Club? As I heard a couple of things yeah. about it, but what, what does it mean? What do you do in the Fight Club? Just when I travel, I'll message like everyone, I'll post it on my story or something. We get it, maybe 50 guys, 100 guys come out, bring our gloves, bring our mouth guards wherever we are and we just spar each other. Yeah, in a park somewhere. Just yeah, uh, yeah. So th nice. we're not really doing a big fight, but we're doing, um, tom yeah, tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. we're going to meet in a park in Amsterdam. Really? And just like do a big game of like tackling, of wrestling and stuff. Like, is it, I don't think you guys would have had a game of bulldog. No, no, you didn't never have heard of yet. it. So in, in UK, we had this in like sports class. You get one guy and he stands in the middle and then all the other guys stand on the side and these guys just need to run past him and he mm -hmm. needs to tackle them to the floor. Uh, Anyone really? he tackles is also a bulldog in the middle with him. So it's like last man standing. It's kind of like um, Battle Royale, Fortnite before yeah, yeah, there was yeah, games. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so it's like, it's just brutal. You tackle each other full contact, drop them into the <laughs> mud and everything you're rolling. So it'll be, imagine we got like 80 of my guys doing that tomorrow in the parks. I can't wait for that. Sounds very good. Yeah. Love to be there. Next time we'll be there to tackle some guys. Yeah, that'll be sick. Yeah. Yes. Hamza? Thank you, man. Thank you very much, man. I Thank really enjoyed it and uh, very interested, interested to see where everything goes. Thank yeah, you so good much luck. for having me. Until next time. Nice. Until the next one. Ciao.